I apologize to everyone. I, I, to the people too? Everybody? Yes, I apologize to everybody. I apologize yeah. that we were running late and okay. we had a few meetings we had to attend. Okay. 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 Camera guy is. Yes, I do, but I'm not giving it to you. I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> Hi, Bill. I haven't seen you. I haven't seen you. Four refuses to decline. You got a good tan. You got a good tan. Because we're in the meeting right away. You got a good tan. You already tweeted it, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You want a bunch more? Or I want to give, does right. all the board members have agendas? Yes. Yes. Okay, so. Okay, so. The motion to stop. This agenda is below Pesma. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready? Okay, um, I'd like to make a motion to open the meeting. Second. Do I have a third? <laughs> oh, uh, so moved. Oh, um, so moved. Aye. Well, okay. Aye. Can everybody please stand? This is going Okay, everybody. Again, we apologize for keeping you waiting. Um, we just had a lot of people that we ended up having to squish in an interview and we didn't want to give them short shrift, so I really do apologize. So um, in terms of the agenda, we just need to add in the CFAA LED street lights, which we'll talk about when we get to it. We just have to add a couple of names to the bus driver list and we need to talk about the pavilion dedication um, that Crystal talked to us about. So, do I have a motion? Uh, I also would like to add uh, escrow. Another one? Uh, yes, escrow okay. for Wayne. And also, I would like to just have a quick discussion on uh, water. Uh, water for the village. Okay. So moved is amended. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion so carried. Okay. Um, the announcement that I have, basically I only have one right now, and uh, next Thursday, July 2nd, the New Paltz Fireworks Celebration for 2015 starts and it's sponsored by the Town of New Paltz and ShopRite. It's at the Ulster County Fairgrounds, Thursday, July 2nd, gates open at 5 p.m. The rain date is Sunday, July 5th. No admission, free donations, welcome, free bouncy house for kids and food vendors. There will be a musical lineup starting at 7.30 with Wonderama, at 8.30 Retro Rockets, and 9.30 the National Anthem um, by Esme Hyman, who's one of our New Paltz own. And then we have our fireworks, and then at 10 o'clock there'll be a second set of Retro Rockets. And I just want to say very quickly, usually we have the fireworks on Saturday night, and because Kingston does the fireworks on July 4th, and we never want to compete with the Kingston fireworks on July 4th, this year, the fireworks actually happen to be on Saturday, July 4th. So it's a combination of the cost would have skyrocketed um, for us to have it on July 4th, I know. And, um, but also we didn't want to compete. So we sort of tried to figure out what to do. And if we did it on Sunday and it rained, we wouldn't have a rain date. So we thought Friday's actually the holiday and we could start the holiday weekend with the splash with the New Falls fireworks on Thursday and that's what we decided to do. So come out next Thursday, celebrate um, the fireworks that we've been doing for quite a long time. And I just, Carol Connolly, I know is still is here because she's gonna do a Time Warner update. She's somewhere, where's Carol? She's in the back. Carol's my assistant, but she's also the chair of the fireworks committee. And I have to say that really pretty much the fireworks this year was really handled single-handedly by Carol. So I think everybody should gratefully share their appreciation with her and come out and celebrate it if it wasn't for Carol. <laughs> She's a committee of one, although Lori Morris did help with the music. So Lori Morris did do the music, but basically everything that's happened with the fireworks from hiring them to getting the fairgrounds, to getting the sponsors, to getting the permits, all been handled by Carol. So I want to acknowledge that because sometimes people don't get appreciated as much as they should. And to setting up the volunteers for, and I think she Give us an update, she may still need volunteers. Yes, well, so. she, when she does the time one update, yes. she can talk about that. I'm going to make her talk about okay, that. Okay, so um, does anybody else have any announcements they want to add? No? Okay, with that, we have public input. So if you would like to speak, just please go to the microphone so the TV cameras can get you and just introduce who you are and thank you for coming. Okay.
this gibber. Okay. This has to do with Normally we don't comment just because I was here in 2011 and I remember this. There is 
some of those logging trucks, and I will work with Chris and I will work with Joe. There's a business, a legal business on Shivertown that is involved in logging, and they are allowed to have their vehicles travel that road. There is no business logging on Shivertown Road. There's a licensed business that involves itself in the business of logging, and that's why in 2011 we couldn't do anything. So I will follow up to make sure that is still, that business is still in place, though. I just want to let you know if the business is there, we can't unfortunately stop them from its, there's, inter, what's it called? The interstate, interstate Commerce. Take, interstate Commerce they laws. Take portion then. Well, I, I mean, I, we'll I'll follow up. Don't you worry. We're going to follow up again. But in 2011, I was here and we followed up, and unfortunately. Okay. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you Jim. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Um, whoever gets up first, I don't know. That. Hi, my name is Susan Wallace, and uh, I moved up here from Orange County. Um, by my accent, we know it's not California. I moved up here because my grandmother had a farm on North Ohio Road. She had 32 meters of apples, and I grew up there. I spent summers there, and I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, so I live in the town of New Falls, and I understand that we have a law here that does not allow backyard chickens. I would like to change that. So I'd like to present to the board on how we can possibly do that and maybe revisit it. I understand that we, it was brought before the board about 12 years ago. No? Less. I was here, I was here. Two years ago. About two years ago. Maybe we start a conversation about it on why uh, the village allows chickens, backyard chickens, but the town does not. I own three acres of land, and um, if I had a coop and an enclosed uh, place for them to graze, not that they would be all over my neighborhood or all over my property, they would be contained, um, it would be great for me. I mean, I would like to get my own fresh eggs, I'd like to monitor like what I feed um, my chickens to get the best quality food for myself. And my family. We're new ones. <laughs> what do we do? Do you want to make a proposal, written proposal to the board? Sure, is that what I need to do? And then make an application for it? I would just make, I would put together a proposal. Okay. Tell us how you think it should be regulated. And then come back yeah. the next meeting? Yeah. Great. Right. Do I need a petition? Okay. All right. But uh, go back and look at uh, in 2012. I was here uh, spring of 2012. We did revisit it. We looked at it, and there was lots of discussion of it. So, what it, were the if you want, well, we can't. We can't. If this is public yeah. comment, we can't uh, oh. engage in a whole conversation. You don't get the stuff, but you guys can go, go onto our website and email me, Jeff Logan. Okay. And then let's set up a meeting. And I'll meet with you. And we'll, I'll gladly talk with That's you. Awesome. And I have no problem. I have nothing against chickens. I have my neighbor has chickens. I live across the street from a farm in the town of New Paltz, so I have nothing against chickens. Okay. So if you want to give me a call, and I'll bring you to where we were, and I'm happy to revisit. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. You're welcome. Hi. Hello, my name is Linda Abbott. I look at uh, Doug Road in New Paltz. I'm here to add my two cents to the um, people who came to the last meeting to talk about the floodplain law. Um, I just want to say that um, I'm a retired school teacher. Um, my husband and I bought our house in 1994. It was a wreck. It was foreclosed. It was um, filled with fleas. It, <clears throat> it needed a total remodeling. Over the years, my husband and I um, remodeled that entire home, every single room. We did it mostly ourselves, but of course we needed a lot of money. And uh, I worked summers. I tutored students after school. Um, the wealth, my wealth, which is not very much, is in that house. That's what I have. That's what I have when I want to sell it and maybe move to a condominium. I hear there's one going to be built in, uh, Seacill is going to be building one. If I want to buy one in a few years, how am I going to sell my house? That's where my money is. I have a gorgeous locust tree in front of my home, next to my home. It must be, a, I don't know how many years old it is, but it's 
close to 100 feet tall. And every time there's a storm coming up, I'm worried now that that tree's going to fall on my house. It's in perfect health. There's nothing wrong with the tree. But I, can, I don't know. No arborist is going to tell me absolutely for sure that tree is not going to fall down. Um, my house was built in 1870. It has never flooded. It was built before the road was dug, dug road. Um, it was an old farm house, it was an old farm, and as I said, it has never flooded, not even during the two storms we had a few years ago. So I, I don't even have flood insurance. My house is above the floodplain zone. Uh, so um, I, I had, an, I had uh, engineers come out, uh, surveyors survey, and I was excused from having flood insurance. That's how confident I am my house is not going to flood. But I cannot be confident that a tree won't fall on my house or that something else terrible might happen. And then uh, where am I as a retired school teacher with my wealth in my home? So I'm here to ask you, no, not to ask you, to plead with you to change that blood plate law. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes, hi, my name is Jeff Caruso. Uh, I wrote, can I repurchase our home just off Spring Ground Road three years ago? It was just after the last serious flood. <laughs> We were fully aware that there's some risk. You know, we also knew that our house has stood where it is for over a hundred years, and it's never flooded. We also pay a premium for flood insurance uh, to mitigate that against that risk. And we know that no property we could ever buy is free from risk entirely. You know, all we're asking the board, as our representatives, is to restore to us the same rights to rebuild our property, which the rest of the town residents enjoy. The Springtown neighborhood, it's not an ill-planned new development that was just built before the last flood. I mean, you guys all know this. I, and I've met neighbors that have been there for 20, 50, my next door neighbors have been there for over 80 years. And they've never left because there's, they've never had to. Uh, and at the same time, it's not a dying neighborhood. You know, it remains an appealing place in just the last year. Within sight of our house, I've seen there's two other homes where new families have moved in. Um, which, the way the law is written now, certain sections are just are simply unfair. That, you know, I was reading it last week, and that particularly that it's section 140, 19G2, it speaks to the old way. You know, it just, it's so strikingly unjust that property owners can be held responsible for paying for the roadway, something we have no control over. Even somebody like Linda, who's got that she's above the base flood elevation and would not be able to rebuild a tree fell on her place because of, because of the way this law is written now. And, you know, supposedly these provisions were put into place uh, through the difficulty of emergency vehicles to reach um, those, you know, rare instances of flooding, but it, it's just not logical. The restrictions against rebuilding do nothing to prevent safety issues if there is another disaster. You know, all they do is restrict our rights after the fact. You know, I, I heard some suggestions last week from a few of my neighbors that made a lot more sense, which is, you know, trying to put his energies into having an evacuation plan that could actually prevent the loss of life, you know, or the risk to emergency personnel if there was another disaster. You know, the way it is now is focused on depopulating the area in the aftermath. You know, the evacuation plan could save lives and it could save Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Denise Hugh, and I've been on Springtown Road for 38 years. Uh, yes, we've endured some floods. We expect it when we live on Springtown Road. But what I would like to know is the intent of this law. What is the intent of saying that we can't rebuild more than 20 percent? What is the objective? What does the town gain by that? That's what I don't understand. And I know this is not an open forum for discussion, but at some point maybe I can come back and get a manager to that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. My house was built in 1780, still standing, never Yes, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the incredible emotional toll that these laws have been taking on my neighborhood. Uh, I was very, very involved with my sick elderly parents for a long time. They absorbed a lot of my care and my uh, concern. And I was really not paying attention. But somebody said, I knew there were restrictions. I remember a couple of years ago, somebody said, well, we'll all grow old here because the town has fixed things so we can't sell our homes. And I thought he was exaggerating. You know, I mean, I didn't think too, I, it sort of flipped my interest, but it didn't really, you know, and then last summer, I was at a, a civic barbecue, and I was talking to this old man who lives further north of me. And I don't even know his name, but I know he lives in a, a little old farmhouse. And he said to me that if his house started to burn down, he thought he would just sit there and let himself burn up in the house. And I was like, what? Are you crazy? What are you talking about? He said, well, if my house burned down, I would have no home and I would have no money. So what, what sort of life would I have? I might as well just let myself go in the house. And I thought he was seriously misguided. <laughs> this was my reaction. This guy is nuts. And it's one reason I started to look into this. Look, this guy has got it all wrong. And you know, I looked at the law and I decided he had it right. Now, I mean, and this is somebody who's like in the old farm family. And this is just, just the idea that we have laws in this town that give a person who has lived and worked here for decades this feeling about his life. I, I know we have a lot of other problems, but please, write this wrong. Please. Does anybody else would like to speak? And, you know, and, oh, and Denise, just to answer your question, the, the reason is, is in because I was here when we did it, in 2012, it was the uh, Bigot Walters, the change in the national flood, uh, flood laws. Okay. And what happened is if we did not take a, put a flood plain law and protect new construction and protect rebuilding the flood plain, none of our residents would be available to get national, would, to get federally backed flood plain, to get flood insurance. That's why we had that. That was the, so to speak. That was the that was the trigger, and so you have every community, and it happened all over the country. And this was in 2012. Was the law was changed, and it changed the rates all across the country. Well, we didn't have one. Well, we we actually didn't have a law. We didn't. You had to get a law on a book, and you had to prove that you enforced the law, and you had a law. So hence why you know the, we had to put the law on in 2012. That was in 2012. Well, that's when we started. No, we. No, I came back in 2012 and Kevin came back to the place. You did it in 2011. In 2011, before preparation of the law, because in 2012 they redid all the rates. Mm -hmm. So when all the rates came out, if we didn't have a law in place in 2012, okay. anyone in by 2012, by, I apologize, by 2012, no one would be eligible for any federally backed flood. You can say no, but it's a fact. I'm telling you, it's, this, is, this is why the law was passed. And I'm more than happy to reopen the law and look at it. I'm not saying enough, but we have to have a law. And, and all towns did it, whether it's us, whether it's Rosendale, whether it's any of the towns. All over the country, everyone had to do it. It's the only way that our community can get federally backed flood insurance. And that, that's, that was the impetus to do it. We weren't out searching to say, hey, let's put in the floodplain law. This is nothing we were searching to do. This was brought to us because we had no other way to ensure that people could get flood insurance. If you don't do it, your community loses federally backed flood insurance. And they actually will pull it, and they have pulled it in communities. The concern is not the fact that you need to or we need it to have FEMA yeah. law. The concern is what was amended to it to make restrictions on the building should possess. And absolutely, and, and fortunately, and, I, and Denise, I agree with you, fortunately, you know, we have, Kevin has been looking at it, we have many residents, Carol's been, uh, Caroline's been in touch with us. Right. 
we absolutely will reopen the law and look at it and, and take it. I mean, we're not, I'm not taking it lightly, but we do need to have a law on the books or insurance will be, con there will be no insurance that is federally backed and then you might not be able to get any insurance. And I, I have one question. Yeah. Well, wait, 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 time, no. time out for a second. Oh. We did have somebody else who wanted to speak. I know, I apologize. Yeah. No, my, my you had the question about oh, it. Okay. No. Is there anybody else who wants to talk? Okay. Then we'll Sorry, go, Ray. Go, 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 go. I apologize, Ray. Ray Lenati, Springtown resident. Um, during the first round of uh, when the laws were passed, uh, the residents of Springtown, we were just doing public comment like we're doing now. I think what our neighborhood is looking for is a commitment to be put on the agenda. Caroline has done a tremendous amount of research that she wants to present to you, but she can't present it on the open mic input from public comment. So what you need to do is get together with her and see what amendments and changes we need to do to this law. We're, we're not looking to remove it for the FEMA insurance. We just want to take out the stuff that limits us to Addition sizes, rebuilding, free fall on the house, everything that we've been talking about for four or five years. So if you could commit to putting it on the agenda, then our public comments wouldn't continue to come like they do. We could sit down with the board and discuss what we don't like about the law and take those parts out for it. Why don't we, why well, don't wait, we wait, have a wait, 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 wait a second, because we did take action. So I just want to know, is there anybody else who wants to speak? Nobody else wants to speak? Okay. Um, I just want to say what we did was when this first came up and this first was brought to our attention, we did talk about it at the board. And Kevin, you, we said that we were willing to reopen the law. We were willing to look at the law. You said you were willing to work on the yes. law with the committee and that you would get back to them and work with them. And, and, and so... Basically, in essence, we have empowered you to work with them, and then when you guys are ready to come to the town board to make a recommendation to us, I think we'll we put it on the agenda. But my point is, I, I think we should have a special meeting, a workshop meeting. Okay. It, it would be maybe an hour and a half where we could actually have a dialogue with the public on this and actually read the provisions, all of us, so we can read the provisions. There aren't many. That, but there are several that have dramatic impacts on the residents out there. So if the board is together and the community is with us, we can actually have an open dialogue, which is what we need to do. Well, my preference would be, because I think you guys all know already what you want to see removed, what you think needs to be removed, I think you should just come back to the board with a recommendation of how you would like to move forward, and then we can review it at that time. And I think it would be more effective use of our time than for us to sit here and go through this stuff. I thought that when I emailed all of you my proposal, that was done. What, what my point is, Susan, is I, this. I don't understand. I, here's, no. Carol, yep. Carol, I think what's important is for the town board to understand completely all provisions in the law. So in order to do that, it's not going to take much time. We should go through it. We'll each have a copy, and we'll go through the sections that are the most impactful, and and we'll talk about it as a board. And then after that, we can come up with language that we can present to the board. But I think there needs to be an understanding first, and then we move on. Well, I already understand it. I, I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be argumentative. I already understand that there's a problem with the law. I understood there was a problem with the law years ago. We have an opportunity to fix it, so why don't we just focus on what we need to do to fix it, come to the board, talk about what we need to fix, and let's, you know, but if you want to do a special meeting, we could do let's it. Let's do a special it's meeting. It's not going to take long. I'd like to do that. I'll, I'll, oh. I'd like to do it. I'll do a special meeting. Okay. Yeah, then we'll do it. No, we do, you wanna, do we want to? Do we want to schedule that now? Just yeah. to close um, the schedule? Well, it's just that I, I think we're going to have to schedule a special meeting for the RRA contract, and we're going to have to schedule a special meeting for some potential more appointments. And so at some point tonight, we're going to have to figure out when we need a special meeting anyway. So if you want to do it like in two weeks. Okay. So July 9th. Is that a Thursday night? It's Thursday night. Do we know if this place is available? It is? Okay. So Thursday, July 9th. Do we do we make a formal motion? Or we can do it at yeah. 7 o'clock? Sure. 7 o'clock, July 9th. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But it might not be the only thing on the agenda. I just, 
for now, it's going to be for Springtown and residents to, to appear where we're going to have a discussion about the floodplain law and the potential amendments. But there may be other action. There may be another group of people here for something else. So we well, will there's, there might be some things that we need to add on we'll to the agenda. We'll Springtown Road first. Let's put it this way. I was going to have to schedule a special meeting because we're going to have to take action on the RA contract that we haven't gotten to that I'll talk to. And I was going to say we're going to have to do a special meeting. There's some appointments we might want to do. So we'll have a special meeting on July 9th. The Springtown Road will be the first order of um, business. business. Yep. And then as the night progresses, we'll be adding to the agenda. Perfect. Seven o'clock. So moved. See if I can be here. Second. There you All go. Favor? Aye. Aye. I'm just checking my Aye. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, so now we're done with public comment. I know that one of the first thing we're going to do is the senior coordinator, but I want to just take one thing out of order. Kathy, it only take a few minutes, okay? Um, we're going to do a couple of appointments tonight. And so um, what I would like to do is make the first appointment, which is I would like to move that Marty Irwin be appointed to the town board of New Paltz. Do I have a second? I will second it and for discussion. Is there any discussion? Yeah. The discussion is, is for uh, to uh, complete the term. Unfinished of term of Gene Gallucci. There you go. Which, en <laughs> which ends, um, so actually the motion should be made, the motion should be made to appoint Marty Irwin to the town board Finishing the un unexpired. Uh, unexpired term of Gene Gallucci, expiring December 31st, 2015, at 12 o'clock midnight. I accept your <laughs> friendly <laughs> amendment. <laughs> so, second. Okay. okay, any discussion? Yeah, I, I just had something quick that I wanted to say. I'm really looking forward to potentially having Marty on the board based on the vote. Um, but I do want to say that I'm a little disappointed in the process for which we got here. I believe you told the newspaper in January that we were not going to appoint someone to the board. Marty did apply and sent his resume out to everyone. I wasn't aware we were going to appoint a town board member tonight. I'm excited that it is Marty, uh, but I think there is the potential there are other people who might have wanted to apply in our town who wouldn't have because the paper did say that. No, the paper, with all due respect, the paper didn't say it. If it did, it was wrong. And I don't think it said that. I know when I was talked about it, I said at this particular moment in time, mm -hmm. we're not looking to put another person on the board, partly because the politics of the board was just so abysmal. Just so, 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 okay, abysmal. It was so abysmal mm -hmm. that to bring another person on, it just didn't feel the right thing to do with that particular point in time. So I basically you know I said I wasn't looking towards doing it. But we got a lot of resumes. We got five resumes, and I shared with everybody every time we got I, a resume. I got one resume. No, you know, you resume, know yeah. that there were other people that applied. I won't make their mention their names tonight because we didn't point them. But there were people, and you knew some of the people because there were some people you probably were not very happy about. So, so, um, so you told me we got five resumes, but we interviewed one person because yeah. there was probably not support over the period of time. I know there were certain people that you would not support. Absolutely, there were people that I didn't feel. People would be happy if we put on. There were other people on the board. So, truth be told, while we were waiting, thinking about not appointing anybody for a while, it became really evident at a certain point that we probably should get somebody up here, and things have calmed down slightly, you know, with the board. Um, not much, but slightly. But you know, that probably would help us to have somebody. And yes, I ended up asking for Marty to come forward to talk to us tonight because I thought he was the only one that the entire board would get behind. And it would just be the best thing for this board to have somebody we can all support, as opposed to having division on anybody else. So it's just a no, you know, I understand just a, that. I'm looking forward to supporting Marty, but I didn't have the opportunity to determine if there were other people applied who wouldn't. Well, have. I'm pretty sure that uh, we can go back through history. I think Carol has said that most of the resumes of the people um, that applied, I can talk to you afterwards about some of the people. I just don't feel comfortable okay. doing sitting here at the table. Then I understand that. I would okay. say, from my experience, um, I, I've tried to encourage people to join the town board to fill the open slot. But with what happens in our community in terms of the personal attacks on board members, nobody wants to do it. And I've talked to several highly qualified people that would be great on the board that would get along with everybody. But quite frankly, it's very hard to find somebody to fill the position given what's happened here in the recent past. So I'm not so concerned about the the procedure used. I'm more concerned about the quality of the person that's presented tonight. Mm -hmm. And 
I'm comfortable with the quality. And so am I. So yeah. I don't see any reason why we don't move forward. No, and I think we should, but I, I felt it was just important to make that point now. Anybody else want to say anything? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion so carried. Marty, if you would like to come up and get sworn in. You can uh, join us at the table. Got you got to go get sworn in by Rosanna first. Who's got a camera phone? Oh. On the end of the reason I have a camera phone. Take a picture, you can send it to... Uh, you send it to Carol, so I'll have it up before you know it. Take a picture and send it to Carol. Carol's back there. And she'll put it on. Waiting for you. Well, well, <laughs> Marty, congratulations. <laughs> pleasure been working for you for many and years. Be a pleasure working with you while. again. <laughs> I think I need to. Yeah. You don't want to be following along, but I'll. Uh, Let's say? Okay. So the second appointment that we're going to do tonight is. Um, um, we're going to, um, I'd like to move appointing Lenny Loza to the ZBA. Second. Um, any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is so carried. Okay, I don't think Lenny's here, but um, we'll get in touch with Lenny to have him come in and get sworn in. Okay. And then um, for, we have a, a planning board alternate, which is quite an um, important position for when there's um, Somebody who has conflict on the planning board and they can't do it. We had that during the Wilmerite situation where uh, somebody who worked for the college and didn't feel comfortable doing it, so they recused themselves. And our alternate, who was um, Lynn Bowdry, mm -hmm. was absolutely amazing. She was there all the time. It was a lot of work, a lot of years. So the planning board alternate, alternative can, alternate. alternate could do not that much or could do an awful lot. And, um, with and they that, might actually be called on again because Wilmerite potentially could be back before our planning board. Right. Potentially. Right. So I would like to move Ray Renati for the New Post Planning Board alternate position. Second. Any discussion? Thanks for being on the sir. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion so carried. Congratulations, Ray. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. And I will just say very quickly that Ray has run a number of times for um, office. Me, Ray has tried to get put on boards many a right time. Now. He's never given up. He doesn't run, lose, and then hide. He consistently comes. He consistently talks out. He consistently reaches out to everybody to try to work and make the community better. So it's about time that you follow God, acknowledge for the concern and care that you have for this community. And so, Ray, if you want to be sworn in now, we'll do it right now. And then you can set up an, a file for you in Kelly's office and it'll be work for you right away. Hi. Ray Lenati. Do you solemnly swear? I uh, support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. I uh, faithfully discharge the duties of the planning board and all that. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, with that. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank Ray. You. <laughs> okay. So, with that, um, we're going to ask for Kathy Puglisi, our senior coordinator, to please join us. Come up here. And um, why don't you maybe sit over there, because this way, uh, so, this at the um, in this year's I guess it was last year's budget, right? Yeah, because it'll be easier. It was you look very pretty tonight, Kathy. <laughs> and it was last year's budget actually, 
that um, we ended up uh, putting in a senior coordinator into our budget because we feel like the seniors, you know, they do so much for this community, they've paid so many taxes, you know, and we spend money on recreation, we spend money on the pool, we spend money on the environment, and what about our seniors? So this past last year, this board put into the budget money for a senior coordinator, and we were very, very fortunate because a lot of, when we hire people, we like to try to get people from New Paltz first. And we were really fortunate that Kathy Puglisi happened to live in New Paltz. And I know Kathy personally from my time on the um, county legislator, I oversaw Office for the Aging um, as a committee chair, and Kathy happened to be the department head for OFA. So I had dealt with Kathy on the senior issues. I knew she was absolutely qualified. She had since retired, and so she was the perfect person for us to bring in to be here to help our seniors. And part of what the goal was with Kathy was that, uh, you know, we have parents, parents that are living here that are aging out, their kids are in California, their parents are having a problem, they don't know who to call, they don't know who to talk to. Now they know they can call Kathy and have Kathy help. There are people in our community, and a lot of people might not realize how much hunger there is in this community, but there are a lot of seniors during bad weather when they can't get out, they've got no food left in their house, they call Kathy, and there have been seniors that Kathy has reached out to the churches to make sure food got delivered to these people and these seniors so they had food. And those are the kind of things that Kathy's been doing. But over and above that, Kathy also believes that seniors deserve to have fun. And so Kathy has been doing events where she's been taking people to um, concerts. She took them to a baseball game, which we will never do again because one of the seniors almost lost their teeth with the ball that uh, <laughs> they lost their teeth. I'm sorry, they did lose their teeth. So baseball games are off the record, but concerts are on the record. And so she's been doing that kind of thing. And um, a few weeks ago, Kathy, with a number of volunteers that we're going to also be honoring, um, created a senior ball. And it was in a few weeks ago, it was on a Sunday afternoon, about one o'clock in the afternoon, and there was music. It happened to be Kathy's son who was singing, but he was phenomenal. Frank Sinatra, move over in your grave. He was terrific. There was dancing. There was fantastic food. There was wonderful decorations done by the Piglet kids from the school, you know, the school and whatever. And there were gifts that they got donated and they did raffles and pulled out the raffles that people didn't have to pay for. And it was just an incredible, incredible event. And everybody was so happy and everybody had such a good time that the love in that room was just really astounding. So A, so because of the work that was done, one of the things I wanted to do tonight was um, present certificates for Kathy to get to all the appropriate people to thank them for this incredible inauguration senior ball, which was only one of many, and it will happen many, many more from there on. And then also, when um, January came, whatever, we didn't actually put Kathy's contract on the agenda for 2015. So after we do the certificates, then we're going to hopefully authorize Kathy's contract. <laughs> And also don't leave out too, and Kathy, I want to thank you too. It's uh, to Kevin mentioned earlier. It's not often we get positive mail at town hall, and I think this is one of the few times that we, since I have been on this board, that we received multiple notes and letters from people saying what an incredible event it was. So I want to thank you for that too. Yeah. One of them actually is sitting in Susan's office today. I think she keeps it there on purpose on her desk because. Makes you happy to read it, I bet. Like the, the book? That one letter. That, oh, the that one nice letter? Is that a nice letter, yes. <laughs> Every once in a while I have to read a nice letter and say, I guess some people do appreciate so, me. Everyone <laughs> really did appreciate it because it, it generated yeah. some mail to us, so it was very, very It nice. was really, really terrific. And also, I, I'm sorry that we don't have it here. Oh, there, there must be some outside. Carol, are there the senior um, brochures right out on the desk? We also, we also put together, for the first time, we put together a booklet uh, for seniors in New Paltz that's a comprehensive booklet of services in Ulster County, doctors that you can go to, pharmacies that you can go to, um, transportation, how to get it, um, you know, eye doctors, all sorts of information for seniors that they can pick up this booklet and uh, they're all gone? I'm my guest in my office. Okay, so we actually at the senior ball were able to hand out all the booklets to the seniors there and then we've been getting the booklets around to the doctor's offices and to places that seniors go so they can take, you know, take this booklet and stuff. And we also still have in the budget um, 
printing up more. We wanted to print up 500, see how they went, and then we still have money to print up some more and actually correct some of the mistakes that is not in there. So like there's a letter from me where I talk about the senior coordinator, but I don't actually say Kathy's name. And so that's the first correction that's gonna be done. And then there are some other names I think that were left off also, if I recall, but so, um, so what I'd like to do is the kids from participation in government who came to the, play, to the senior ball, not only did they get here early and do all of the decorations, which were just really, really beautiful, they also cooked food on their own, that they cooked their own food and brought their own food. And um, they were just, just, just really remarkable. I think they were also the ones who went around to get a lot of the gifts, right? They did, they absolutely did. So they went around to get the gifts. So they couldn't be here tonight because actually they're all graduating. Senior, senior ball, their senior ball. Senior right. balls. So tonight is their senior ball, so they could not come tonight. And we didn't really want to wait you know, longer to get it done. And so what we're going to do is if Kathy wants to, uh, if nobody saw, I don't know if you all saw this or not. You know, so this is our um, New Paltz Senior Service Directory, first edition provided by the town of New Paltz. And um, the directory was made possible by Kathy Puglisi, Carol Roper, Jane Ann Williams, Mary Sawaski, Leslie Wolharb, and I'm sorry if I'm saying your names wrong. Right. <laughs> I'm just well, well, right? Okay, Jackie Brownstein, Jane Verney, and Jane Marat, Jan Marata. Now, was there somebody else that was left off of this or no? Pearl, Pearl Lee. Lee. Right that, so that's why when we do our second book. <laughs> <laughs> Pearl Lee, how can we leave Pearl you off? Pearl Lee was left off. Yeah. How can we leave off Pearl? Oh my God. I can't even believe you're not at the senior ball tonight. Because <laughs> she's here, okay? So it was really, this couldn't have been done without them. And Jan also, like, the, you know, the, the, the senior ball, Jan was just, she was serving everybody. She was working. She was cleaning. She was, and so when they actually had ice cream for everybody, I had gotten up to go get ice cream, but a couple of people cornered me and started talking to me. She actually put together a Sunday for me and hand delivered it. That's how attentive she was. So it was really, really amazing. And I want Jan for supervisor, but I don't think she'll run. But I'm um, putting it out that Jan for supervisor. <laughs> okay, Jan. So anyway, um, so what I'd like to do is for participation in government, I'm going to read these off. Um, and then you'll get them to the seniors, right? So first we have Gabriella Keith, Leah Jones, Michael Bronco, and Michaela Cochran. And so they were just absolutely Dave fantastic. Cochran. What? Michaela Cochran. Michaela, okay. Michaela Cochran? Okay. Yeah, they were just absolutely fantastic. So if we can give these to Kathy. And then, do we have certificates for Pearl and those people or not? What? <laughs> we have certificates. Next one we'll okay. get it for you. We, we, we need Next certificates. Time. Next time we all have certificates for you. I'm sorry, okay? Um, we have certificates also for the businesses who donated um, the, the, the gifts, and the seniors were just so appreciative when they got those gifts. They all sort of put in for certain gifts, and uh, when they won the gifts, you just should have seen the delight on their faces. It was really, really, really worth it. So the businesses that participated were Cocoon, Dollar Tree, Fryhoffers, Handmade, McDonald's, Stewart's, Wuckle View Farm, The Christmas Tree Shop, Joe Puglisi, and John Puglisi that we need to thank. So these are certificates for them. And we really, really want to thank them. And you women who stood up and did all this work, can you stand up so we could appreciate you? Come on. Yes, no. Come on, stand up. Thank you, Paul. Come on, come on, stand. Stand up. It really was terrific. I don't know, Kathy, if you want to say anything about it, um, no, except for the microphone. No, I'm just very grateful for the uh, opportunity to do this because I really enjoy working with seniors. And some of the things I did this year gave me more pleasure than, than I expected. So it was nice. Mm -hmm. And we keep going. Good, Thank good. So it's been really terrific. So with that, I would like to move um, the consulting service agreement for, with Kathy Puglisi as our senior coordinator for a sum of $6,000 starting from January 1st, 2015, going through December 31st, 2015. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's okay. So. 
Kathy, I am going to sign it, and you're going to sign it. I don't need no, to you don't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you actually have to uh, sign it. Sign it? And I have to, yes, she signs know, it, and then... I think we have to fix it because there should be two places. So we'll, we'll we'll get we'll get this to you and stuff, and we'll make sure. Paid. She keeps getting paid. So. Have your mom give me a call. I will. I try. I will. I will have my mom call. Okay. Thank you so much, Kathy, for coming thank out you today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you for all the work that you've done to make this happen. Okay. The second um, the second uh, thing that we have um, is the t um, for the Time Warner Senior Discount. Um, Carol Connolly, who is my assistant, and honestly, Carol is the nucleus of town government, and everything swirls and happens around Carol, and um, she has also taken on the responsibility of sort of being the franchise, um, the PAC, the, um, um, what's it called, the um, TV, the public access television station coordinator, in a sense, for the town. We get a lot of calls from seniors. We have a lot of problems with Tom Warner when it comes to the senior discount that they're allowed to get. We're the only town that still has a senior discount. You had to have it before Tom Warner cut it off, but there's a lot of seniors who don't get the discount even though they're deserving of it. We get a lot of phone calls. Carol spends an awful lot of time talking to the seniors, making them feel comfortable, calling Tom Warner. We've had problems with Tom Warner in the past. Um, you know, the past PAC committee has had a lot of problems with Time Warner, um, but you know, we've been working very closely. Carol's created a relationship, and so if Carol, you want to come up and do an update of um, where we're at, because we promised the seniors we would sort of get back to them. Okay, so it's been four weeks since uh, David Whalen was here, and a lot of different things were addressed. The two things I really focused on was the senior discount and getting uh, service to that farm out on Jenkins Lane. And um, so I put an announcement in, in the New Falls Times, uh, basically asking seniors to, if they were supposed to get a discount or if they had gotten a discount in the past and then they were told there was no discount and then they just gave up. So I asked them to contact me. Um, I had nine people respond. And I had them call the special number. Uh, part of the problem is when you call Time Warner, they tell you there is no discount. So most people just hang up and go away. Oh, well, the discount's over. So by them creating a special number, we lost, a lot of people lost the opportunity for having their discount. So anyway, so out of the nine people who called in the past few weeks, three of them did manage to get their discount. The other six were told that they were not, they had no record. So I, I really think that we should push this issue. Um, I feel that there are more seniors out there that were entitled to the discount, and they're not getting it. Um, and I, you know, the whole fact, I either Time Warner, they don't really say that they were the contract where this is they're entitled to it, but it doesn't say that they have to notify the seniors. But by, you know, so, all right, so it's your responsibility to make sure you get your discount, but, <laughs> When you call in the number and they tell you no, I, I, I'm really not comfortable with that, and I don't think that that's right. That by creating that separate number, I think they they created some kind of a loophole. So I, I think that somehow we really need to push this issue and 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 really help get the other scene. Like I said, the other six people who called, I'm sure there's more. If they can prove that they've been in New Falls, they paid their bill on time, um, you know, and they were eligible prior to the new franchise agreement taking place, they're entitled, in my opinion. So, um, you know, I've, I've tried following up with David Whalen. Uh, I haven't gotten a response yet, but I wanted to know, you know, how to proceed. And uh, I also asked, so so basically, as far as, as the seniors are concerned, that's, that's where it stands. I'm going to continue. I'm going to see the New Pulse Times runs the announcement again, so that I can get more people to contact me. So I have names, I'm getting their account numbers, and uh, you know, and I think that's... Uh, Should we bring Mr. Whalen back? I would bring him back, but you know, Let's he really back. doesn't answer a lot of questions. Well, I mean, I watched... Well, given him an TV. opportunity, and he made a pretty good presentation, uh, made us, uh, made me think that he was going to be very responsive. I think he's not being responsive. 
spots, if, then we should bring them back. Okay. Well, yeah. Do you have a with any of those right. people who have a question, maybe? I'm one of the people that called you. Okay. And that occurred for a couple of years that there's a senior discount. I have been calling a couple of years and they can keep continuing to come here. There's absolutely no senior discount. I even told them what they, I was told the discount was this one, three months a year. Yeah. Right. Newports was one of Newports. Newports was one of the few few towns that did have it, I think, and we kept it. You know, they got rid of almost all the other towns, so that's why it's been so problematic because Newports has it, and nobody else had it, and so they just automatically say there is none. You know, that's why we're always having such a hard time fighting for it because it's like, yes, we have it in our contract. You know, and that's how we've been able to get certain people to be. You know, Carol's been making all the calls. Right. But in my opinion, yeah, I'm just wondering, have you looked at other companies like Daily Vision or anything? If we can't, it's a franchise. Yeah. Well, but unfortunately, they pay to lot. They pay to put the lines in, yeah. and it's their lines, and you know, it's it's just not that. That's why they're called monopolies. Okay. I think there's so I just need your, uh, yeah, just, I need just your quick call me, uh, get, get me your account number, because I want to have everyone's name, address, and account numbers, and submit it and tell, the, tell the, uh, the rep to research it, okay? Because if you could show evidence that you're there, and what, you know, that you were there, you paid on, you met the criteria, and you called, and they, uh, look, they, you should be able to call any number, and they should tell you, yes, you're entitled, what town are you in? They should all be informed. I, I feel that it's Time Warner's responsibility to inform their employees that this discount is available for the town of New Falls, even though we are, pro they are we are told we are the last town to get a discount. I've been for five years. If I had 65, that was one of the many. Yeah, first. Oh, that's a nice, oh, oh, well, absolutely, and you're and entitled to it. Okay, so right. um, when, when he was here, he gave, a, I thought, a nice presentation. He seemed very receptive. He took down a lot of numbers. Do we know if he followed up with any of those people? I haven't got a response, either from him or his assistant, Susan Eckert. So. What I can say is um, um, Mr. Bunt had called me, mm -hmm. and uh, I think he might have called Fred, and then Fred called me because he couldn't get through, and Fred had what number wrong. So when he gave me his number, and I said, Fred, the three is a six, but I thought he might have said that the guy had called him and he was trying to call him back. Okay. But, you know, I can't say for sure, sure, Dan, in terms of how many people followed up or didn't. I just know Fred did call me okay. as a way to follow up, but, you know, and Carol wasn't around when I, I took that call. Like, I could follow up with Yanni? I actually, I spoke with okay, him okay, good. because I was trying to find out, you know, okay. he was making any progress because I, I spent a lot of time, you know, researching his, um, his issue, and he said no one called him back either, but he said there are 13 new t telephone poles from Butterville towards Jenkins. Now, they were supposed to come the other way, and it would have been a short distance. I, I don't know, maybe they just decided to build up because there are properties along there that have houses on them. They must be using satellites, so maybe Time Warner is just figuring, just put yeah. it in and for future you know, customers okay. Okay. with the infrastructure. So I'm hoping, so I'm gonna keep an eye on that, and he, I'm sure he'll let me know because, I mean, they have issues. They can't even get uh, a security system and things like that, and, and it's been, you know, the satellite doesn't really cut it. So um, so that's where we're at with the Time Warner. So the thing is, Kevin, we could try to bring Mr. Whelan back. Technically, by the contract, they um, are obligated to come once a year to do a presentation to the public. They're not obligated by, you know, by the contract to come back again. So if we could try to get him to come back. Um, I think in some ways, maybe if we created some kind of like if uh, a procedure that we wanted, or maybe we even draft a letter sort of saying, I, I don't know if we should, I don't know, we could try to get them to come back, I just know that we don't have a legal, they were right. legally obligated to come once a year, but and we called legally, them that. But they're legally obligated to, to, to the, they're bound to the franchise agreement, mm -hmm. so we need, I think we need to enforce it, there needs to be a certain time period that we allow them to rectify this. Yeah. 
Um, I, but, but, I, mean, but, but, I don't understand. I don't know if there's like a legal, a normal mm -hmm. legal time period. Do we have to send legal notice that, hey, hello, you're on notice and you better fix this problem? Mm -hmm. And then we can proceed from there because just making a million phone mm -hmm. calls, I feel like they're just, they're, you know, look, town governments are very small. There's no staff. They just want us to give up and go away and, and not bother. And I, I'm, I find that, you know, yeah. that, that's but, my opinion. No, no, I know. But part of my problem is I know how much time you're spending on this, okay? And right. know, there's a lot of things that we have that we're working on. The things are going to get even busier now with the New York Rising, with the microgrid, everything's sort of kicking in, the water contract. I mean, there's just so much work that goes through our office, and the time that you spend on Time Warner. I would like to figure out a way to like, I'd almost be prepared to like have Joe Moriello send some kind of letter on behalf of the town relative to the franchise agreement saying that we've got seniors. I mean, I'd like to come up with something that's more definitive that we can do. I don't want you to keep spending so much time on this and I just don't know I don't if we just bring- Just another thought on it. We could go over their head if, from working in the assembly. There is a legislative staff person at Time Warner that's assigned to assembly members or senators we could contact one of the legislative offices, Assembly or Senate, tell them we're having this problem, and ask them to reach out to that coordinator. I mean, I, I don't know if people like having people go over their heads, but I'm saying it at least yeah, adds another know. level. Well, well, I have to, okay. well, what I have to say is um, I have gone over the head of the person we had prior to the guy we got in. And I had, when I first came in, the, you know, Don Kerr and um, Andrew Russo were dealing with this, and the town was owed an awful lot of money, like a quarter of a million dollars, and they couldn't get it, they couldn't get it, they couldn't get it. I did go over her head. I called the top guy. We had quite a conversation. He pretty much wanted me to try to work with this woman again, and I basically said no, and then we talked a little bit, and I said, I'll just do it for you, but she actually shortly was gone. And the guy that we have now, yeah, the guy that we have now actually has been pretty receptive and has been pretty good. So I guess in some ways I'm reluctant to go over just yeah, no, only because we were in a better place. Sure. We did get the quarter of a million dollars also. Okay. But you know, but you know, we're in a better place, so you know, I would rather instead of just going over the head, yeah. not that it's not a bad idea, but if there's a way that maybe we can draft a letter, a legal letter that mm -hmm. gives him the ability to get them to do what they have to do, I just would prefer to No, I just think it's an option we should look at yeah. if all mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't know, Kevin, is there like something with the agreement, some kind of legal letter that we could uh, draft that holds them accountable or something? I'll do it. Okay. That'd be great. I'll give you the information. Just do me a favor. Email me another copy of that franchise agreement. Okay. It's I'll on the first. web, too. It is? Yeah, it's oh, so on, the, on the, where do I go for? All right, so I'll do so. that. I'm looking for a provision and just follow with me and Barnes so we get it done. Great. Are you sure, Kevin, you want to do yeah, that? Yeah, I do. You got time tomorrow. Yeah, I want to do it. There you go. Okay, right. so awesome. we'll, we'll do that as our first, we'll do that as our first approach and we'll go from there. Okay. 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 All right, great. Okay, great. if I could, oh, wait, Kevin, you can't go. Because Jeff had a question about volunteers on July 4th. Oh, yeah. July 4th. <laughs> what do you need? We need people to uh, pass the bucket. We there have two go. gates. Uh, worth, I'm thinking at least at three hours, three hours total. So, uh, to sit there for three hours is brutal. I, I did that last year and I kept rotating. Uh, Bob Hughes sat at the other gate. Uh, Susan actually had relieved him at some point. I mean, it's it's a lot, you know, and it's just, it's basically just to get a small, you know, people who are willing to offer donation, you know, proceed money for next year, so. Um, they should contact you if they're interested in doing that? Absolutely. And they would contact you how? Um, well, website. Town Hall or 255-0604, extension 103. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. Thank you for putting together the fireworks. Okay, so um, Veronica. Okay, I don't want to make you keep waiting. So I'm going to I'm, I'm going to um, jump to the water bill. So basically, I don't know where we're going to go from here. We'll figure it out. Um, Veronica, if you want to come up, you know if that's okay. So basically, in essence, this happens every once in a while, where um, a customer gets a bill that's much higher than what their bills have been. Sometimes there's leaks, the water sewer people go out, they take care of it, things get adjusted and whatever. And then sometimes it doesn't get adjusted and the customers are not necessarily happy and they have the right to appeal to come to the board. So if Veronica was asking for the right to appeal and come to the board and talk to us directly, um, 
I, I've given you all of this information, so I don't know if it's necessary to read no, this. Okay, except for Marty's brand new. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, basically, I live at 2 Old Mill Road. Um, um, my husband passed away four years ago, and he used to deal with everything that had to do with the house. Um, but I've been here for 12 years. He lived there for 22 years. My mother-in-law, Dr. Marjorie Butler, lived at 4 Old Mill for 40 years. And I have all of those bills. We've never experienced a bill. This is a $400 water bill. Yeah. And I'm not there most of the time because even though I'm technically retired, I'm a Tony nominator, so I have to go to the theater and I'm in the city on and off. So during that period, I had very specific times that I was not there. Now, my mother, when my mother-in-law passed away at 101 and a half in 2012, um, the house was sold. Uh, the person who bought the house does not live there. And the house is rented out to college students. And so it's been turned from a single family residence in, in essence to a dorm. And we just got a new group. There are gonna be about eight of them there this year in that little house. So the point is, I have no idea. There are no leaks in my house. I think that's what I had a problem with is someone who's never been in my home doesn't know how I maintain my home, and I'm a staunch conservationist. I really don't tolerate that kind of thing. I have a handyman, so when Commissioner Marks sent out uh, the person from the water department, we went through the whole thing. He was there for quite a while. I wanted to be thorough, too, because this is setting a precedent. I can't receive a $400 bill and have someone tell me, oh, well, the toilet was stuck. I mean, that's just not how I live. So this was important to me because more than the amount of the, of, of the bill is the fact that it occurred. Um, so I, I there, my husband was on the village planning board from 1984 to 1988. So we're really, I love this town. I wanna be involved in this town, but I can't have somebody, I just make a determination about my home when they've never been in my home, especially since there's nothing to to substantiate that. So, well, I think I might have just missed something mm -hmm. because the house that you just talked about that has eight people in it, mm -hmm. that's next not the door house. to me. That's not the house, that's not your not house. house. No, no, it's okay. the house next door to me. Oh, it was my mother-in-law's house. Okay, so I'm very familiar with that house. Oh, but that has nothing to do with the sort of that you're challenging. Well, the point I'm making is that, I don't know, I wasn't there. They could have hooked up a hose, and they have a, a, wa a car wash detailing business. So, I mean, I don't know, but I know I did not use $400 okay. worth of water. That's like a swimming pool amount of water for someone okay. like me. The okay. highest bill I've ever had was $68. So how many gallons was that? Do you know? I don't. I, well, it's actually, I have the bill. And the, and the problem, and the, the, the problem is, and just so you know, and because I've faced this probably as many times as Susan has, uh, every few years we get someone, is the community has paid for the water. We, we, won't, we don't not pay for it. Oh, we, 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 we have a meter that comes into the town, and then the town pays the village, and then we are simply going out what we have already given out of the funds. I'm glad you brought that up so because. Since, so then we can't, what we can't do is we, if there is a error or a way that we can find that we are at fault, then it, it can be corrected. The problem is, is we can't just adjust a bill for no reason because we're, it's against the law. We're giving away the assets of the town. It's no different than you walking into town hall and asking Roseanne to hand you $25. No, no, the burden of, the burden of, letting, no, the burden of proof yeah. is on the water department to prove that I use that right. water. And, and, we were able, and we were able to do that. We How? Were, we were, no one said that to me. I will I will give to our water department who is. Are you talking about this yes. as a meter reading, right? Yes, yes, and the meter, sure the meter was, was changed uh, the day that the person from the water department the actual and outside I'm reader was changed. What, what we've done is we've taken an actual meter reading. Mm -hmm. um, it was taken from the outside reader mm -hmm. as it had been done for you know, however, however long you've been in the home. That's mm -hmm. how the normal reading was. Mm -hmm. In that period in question, mm -hmm. meter reading was taken the same way, nothing different. 
the fact that if the meter reading had stayed odd and high like mm -hmm. that, then we would have determined that, okay, there's something going wrong. What made us believe that there's a leak was that the meter reading went back to normal. Correct. So you had a steady flow. A spike. You had a spike, and then it went back down. And it's been normal. We even did what I call, I don't know if it's a technical term, I did a couple short reads mm -hmm. after that. You know, instead of waiting for a quarter, because we read quarterly, we went back in between, read the meter, the outside meter, mm -hmm. and then you know, turn all right. You know, the usage is what looks like, according to the billing department, mm -hmm. right along the same lines. We also looked you know, of a normal bill. Oh. We also looked at the house next to you. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, maybe there's, you know, I believe one of the letters where it was possible that we read the wrong meter. Mm -hmm. So we looked at their usage, and their usage was pretty much little fluctuation, but it met, you know, it was right in line. Mm -hmm. That to us, you know, besides um, an equipment failure, uh, meant a leak. Now, equipment failure, a, a meter does not speed up. A meter slows down. You lose one percent of your meter of your gallons per day, um, or percent. I'm sorry, one percent of the meter is actually per year. So a ten-year-old meter, you're ten percent off. It's this is what the meter companies tell us. When we came, we calibrated the outside meter to read exactly what the inside meter reads. Okay, the outside meters slow down. It's a, it's not digital, it's not electronic, it's a mechanical thing. Mm -hmm. Dust, bugs, everything gets in them, they, they slow down. The meter reading from the outside reader was less than the actual reading on the meter head, you know, in the home. Mm -hmm. So it's... What, what, what would it count for? Just normal should, meter. But shouldn't it be opposite, mm -hmm. based on what you just said? No. You said the internal one gets bugs and... No, 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 it's the external one. Oh, it gets bugs, right. okay. It's on the outside of the home. Okay. But normally what happens is the outside readers slow down a little more than your 1% a year than the inside ones. It was way off, the outside right. reader. And it's, you know, however long that's been on, I mean, I've preached this many times, we are so far behind in getting into a, a new system really need to address but th this is what th this was my criteria for going okay there's a leak and I I worked in this in the 80s so I've even reached out to other departments who do this quite a bit more mm -hmm. you know and this is what I found you know but you know what if we were talking about you know uh, fifty dollars over and that kind of leak because that would that would mean something in my house would be leaking nothing in my house is leaking. My handyman said that. The person you sent said that. So leaks don't fix themselves. Just the toilet. Well, they one. do in toilets. No. Yes. My toilet. If my toilet is leaking, I would hear it. No, not always. And and in that that pamphlet I gave you. Yes, I saw Actually that. states that in that that you might not hear it. You might not even know it's leaking. But why has it never happened before? I mean, I just, well, just if there's a problem. I have a problem accepting the fact that someone who's never been in my home, and I'm I'm not in my house a lot, so for someone to say that my toilet is leaking and they can't prove it, I, I don't know what to say about that. Well, that's not the, that was the place. I mean, that's the usual culprit. Could could we absolutely but prove never it? Happened. Right, but you also mentioned that your house is very old. Have you ever had anything in a home? My house is not very old. It was, it was built in 1963, okay. and it's been very well maintained. So it, I'm not saying it isn't, but have you ever had anything in the house that's needed maintenance? Normally, where it's any, any, right. So sure. it's the and same I do thing that would be immediately. agreed with water. I, I, I take care of business. If something is a pro there, if there's a problem, that's my job. My husband always maintained our house. I continue to do that. That's why this upsets me a great deal. What would you do? What would you do if you were us in terms mm -hmm. of setting town policy for this stuff? Well, here's what I would suggest: is that if what we're doing. This process is very important to me. That we have the opportunity to discuss uh, some sort of settlement, and I'm willing to pay three times what my highest water bill has ever been to split the difference with you because I don't believe there's a limit. I just replaced my entire sidewalk so that the bill will be higher this time, but I know why. 
right? So uh, that's what I would do. I mean, so in terms of policy, how should the town board approach these situations that we're faced with? Should we develop some kind of a rule or should? I, I don't think that you can do anything um, across the board like that. Um, I do think that looking at these handwritten, you know, meter, uh, meter readings. records, yeah, is, is kind of archaic. I mean, there's, there is room for error there. Um, so I, the whole process to me is a little dated, you know, so I think. Um, and I would agree with you 100%. I know, I know you have a tall, you know, order there to get this fixed, but I, I don't want to be held responsible for something that I didn't use. I mean, I, I, again, part of sort of the problem, which is where we're sort of in a quandary, because it's a difficult situation for us, mm -hmm. is as I understand it, you know, Chris is somewhat saying that all the research that he did, mm -hmm. everything went back, the water usage read what the water usage was for that month, and then everything went back to normal again, in a sense. So it really was like, you just haven't, you couldn't find anything to say that there was a consistent problem going on. You had your same water usage, it spiked up, and then all of a sudden your water usage is back to normal. $400 is more than a spike. Is, well, it, is it A, legal, and B, setting a poor precedent? Like we can't refund the bill, but for her next bill, we dock the bill. It's not, it's not legal you're giving away assets for which this town is paid for. We've already paid for the water, and uh, it's setting a very bad precedent because we don't know if the water was used. It's possible, as you stated, it's possible the neighbor came over and said, I am going to, she's away, I know she's away for the next three weeks, I'm going to be washing cars. Uh, I have faced this uh, same exact water bill issue maybe three or four times I've been on the board and uh, under Phil Johnson, and I think I've done one or two with Chris, maybe one with Chris, and we've never gone back, because it, it, it is, we have spent the money, and, and like but Chris. But I did. And the, this, <laughs> yes, you have, this community had, that money came out of your tax dollars. This community, did you did spend it, it was part of your tax dollars. No, but I didn't use and, the resources. And, and, like, and, and like Chris, uh, I've actually gone around in red meters, and I've, as a child, I, I know how to now. Yeah, I went around and <laughs> I, we used to carry a, a black book and go into people's basements and write them yeah. down with pencil. And uh, so yeah. I, I have seen the system change tremendously. But uh, to answer your question, though, no, uh, it's uh, this is it is no different than any other asset of the town. We have paid for it as taxpayers, and our taxpayers have paid but our, for it. Our policy has been that we've given people a, an opportunity to extend the time to repay. It's that not, about the, yeah. it not about the amount of money. It is not about the amount. So, yes, I, I mean, I will say, and Jeff and I are disagreeing a little bit because I haven't experienced it this time around, but last century when I was on the town board, there were a number of times when people came and I do remember that we did actually, you know, after going through the whole process, we did knock things down or come to agreements. So Jeff and I are having a little bit of a disagreement about this, but in some ways I think what you've sort of made it a little hard for us, unfortunately, is by saying that your neighbors next door, the kids, run a car washing business, and could have they come They're over? Gone. But I'm saying, but could have they come over and used your water while you were gone to wash cars? Therefore, the water was used. It was just I don't know that, but I'm saying. Yeah, but by you saying that, I'm saying by you saying that. No, no, no. But by you saying that, it made me think like, oh, okay, no, maybe the, the point water was. Is that there's a, there is not uh, it, there's no ironclad proof that I used the water. That's all I'm saying. Well, we actually do know, we do have the ironclad proof that the water did go through your meter. That we do have, so I will disagree with you on that. Where? That would be the meter reading from which That's our water department, that would be the meter reading. So we do have the iron. I, I have so. the meter reading here, and as it was explained to me, it, it uh, they, they're mm -hmm. out of sync, the meter readings. So, but they were always taken from, even at a sink, they were always taken from the same meter. They were always taken from the outside reader. In other words, the outside reader... We never got into the house until we thought we had a problem. We knew there was a problem. That's when we took it inside reader. Mm -hmm. Ever since then, every reading has been taken from that same device outside. Which was replaced, that's my point. It was calibrated. It was, yeah, it so was put back to the same number as the inside meter, which was actually less than what the outside the one inside was more. The one outside slowed down more than the one on the inside. 
Right, but the one on the inside read less than the one on the outside. And, if we, and you know, if we'd always taken the meter reading from the inside reader, from the inside reader, you know, we had access, then, you know, and then we were switching back and forth, you know, and this term we did it from the inside one, next time we did it from the outside one. I, would, I wouldn't have a problem at all. So, yes, you're absolutely right, there is, there's a difference. The fact that we took it to the same meter, the same reading device every time, the numbers went were static, went up, spiked, and went right back down to normal after that time. Is one other question for you, Chris. The manufacturers of these meters, when you ask them if there's any aberration in the meter, I mean, is there any history, is there any evidence of, like, poor behavior for these meters? Any documented history? Just in slowing down. That's it. That's it. It's basically and a paddle. It's basically because Chris and I actually used to take these apart and fix them. Some that you. It's a paddle. Oh, there this, you go. This is an old meter. Head. Now what happens is the inside builds up with dirt. Now this is normal, normal wear for your water. Comes in, picks up particulate, mm -hmm. right, and slows things down. Mm -hmm. you break this apart. This is the actual dust. I had to clean this for being dirty. This was an actual meter we took out of service. Mm -hmm. All this does is do this. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very tight column mm -hmm. up here. Up here. Okay. So when it starts to build up, things start to slow down. This is a normal progression in meters. There's nothing in here that makes it go faster. The only thing that makes this move is the flow of water through the meter. If this stream here, Oh, it starts to get clogged. Mm -hmm. You have less flow, the meter goes to spin fast. Mm -hmm. You know, unless you got, unless there was a way of hooking something into it, you know, like a, another hose or something, really pushing a lot of water through the meter. It's just the pressure from the street, the usage in your home. Mm -hmm. This thing spins, or really just kind of flops around. Mm -hmm. And that's what turns a magnet. A magnet. Would a burst of air change that at all? They're not supposed to register air. They're only supposed to register air. But would, would, would a really like charged burst of air, like high pressure? I wouldn't rule it out, but if you got that much high pressure, we'd have been out front replacing the main. Well, you did, but I... I the thing, what we do is, is like what, what that is, <laughs> is, every house has a shutoff. Mm -hmm. um, typical problem in the wintertime is we lose the shutoffs in the ground. Yeah. So let's say you... The house goes up, Doc, mm -hmm. and broke the line. Right. The only way we can shut it off is to find that. Right. So what I've done is I've started to raise all of the shutoff pipes. Right. And all it is is it's a piece of pipe that we can stick a tool down into. It just brings it out of the ground so we don't have to dig up and frozen the line. Right, but that's the only thing that's different about my property is when that spike was put in my front yard. That's the only thing that's different. So I, I'm not trying to get out of paying a bill. I pay my bills. I'm happy to pay my bills. I want it to be my bill book. I want to be responsible for what I'm responsible for. And I have never, uh, we've never encountered it before. And because I had someone come out and look at the house and make sure that everything was working properly, and because I have someone who does that all the time, because I'm, I'm very conscious of that, because I'm not there all the time. And again, I, I don't take my comments wrong. I, I'm sure you maintain your house mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. um, I've had in my own house, mm -hmm. which I'll be quite honest, I don't maintain it in my house very well. Mm -hmm. um, brand new toilet valve, and then I keep using it, but that's the usual one. Right. And, a, and had them leave, had them leave to, to the point where I only knew it with my septic over the The tank was the Now, it doesn't take much to leave. Mm -hmm. That leaks it down, and you go up, you know, with your an eighth of the size of my thumb mm -hmm. or my, my pinky, mm -hmm. and I'm losing 10,000 gallons of water a day. And unfortunately, that you know, it's going into a sewer or septic, and hopefully, your septic works better than mine if you have it. No, my septic um, is good. You don't have that issue. But it was something that I never heard, never saw. I'm on well. Um, actually, the only way I did find it. That's how it's 
So I'm to accept this? I don't, I'm, I'm confused because if this happens again, I mean, it's never happened before. So what, I, I don't understand what the resolution is. It sounds like we don't have the ability to change the bill at this point. I know in the future, and I'll just throw this out there, the, um, the new meter system, which is what the bill uses now. Um, there's a lot of debate over the radio reading meters. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they don't do any box. Oh, small meters? You mean the small meters? Yeah, this is, they're yeah. an older generation. But what this enables you to do is um, you can drive in the neighborhood once a week, push a button, and it'll give you a report of everyone in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And it'll actually show a red flag up on the screen if someone's water usage is over what it's been put into the computer that it should be. So now we have to go full court mm -hmm. through the billing, you know, through the customer getting the bill, the customer coming back to us and going, I had a problem. My bill is, you know, astronomical, and you know, we've gone out and found a leak. You know, one with a boiler drain that was leaking, thousands of dollars. Each day. I would feel better saying, if someone had found a leak at my house, right. and no one did. And honestly, I, you know, I, don't think wrong. <laughs> I wish we had. Yeah. But this is what the new system. Is. You know, I'm trying to make it. We go so long before we realize there's a problem. You know, where I could probably takes us a week to read meters now with two people. I could read the whole town water district in less than an hour. Well, I, 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 um, I need a resolution, please. The resolution we've always done in the past, Veronica, is we will give you the opportunity over an extended period to. That's not the issue. Okay, well, that's the, you asked me the resolution. That's not the, okay, that, that's that fine. isn't okay. a resolution. Yep. That's, that's a payment it. plan. I don't need a payment plan. Okay. I need a resolution to this situation. And if I can't get one from you, then I have to take my last step. I have to take it to independent counsel because I, I, I believe that I have enough information here that says I don't have a problem. And, and that is your right to do that, unfortunately. Right. If that's you feel, and again, we will we will stand by our water department. We will stand by the two bills. And again, I, I've been on this. We just went through this a few months ago. And it turned out to be a boiler drain. And it was but draining right into the looked sun. at my house. There's nothing in my house leaking. Uh, his person looked from your water department, and I had an independent person look. And there's, there's no leak. There wasn't a leak at that time. There hasn't been a leak. So I feel that I'm being asked to pay for a resource that I didn't use. And I have a problem with that. And we're not. We're, we're not enabled to ask our community to pay for a resource that we've already paid for. You absolutely are. So you you're asking me to pay for it. You, you have, we all have, this community has paid for it. So we pay the village for that resource. We pay them for that water. That's what we so the first thing to say that that water was coming from me, I think is erroneous. That's what I'm addressing here. And, and everything that we have, and again, I apologize you disagree, and, and I think that's, that's where we are, is that everything that we were able to investigate shows that our meters were working, both the interior and exterior meters were working, but you would do agree to the meters were working. Mm, they, were, they were incorrectly working, the meters. That's, they were, that's the, not the, my meters were, the meters were working and the water did go through the meters. That's where we disagree. Okay, that's fine. Ms. Butler, do, do you have an outside hose bin connection? So it's gardening, watering your lawn, you have a way to turn it on outside? Yes. Is there a valve on the inside of your house that yes. controls that? Yes, and off? I turn that. Well, the one in the back was not off, but uh, there that, was no hose That's part of the challenge, it. though. If, if for anybody that's trying to think through, well, what might have happened? Mm -hmm. The meter is certainly one. But mm -hmm. Personally, mm -hmm. uh, I'm comfortable with the explanation that, that's given. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a handyman that's gone there. Maybe he inadvertently left the valve open someplace for a little bit. You've got neighbors next door that do car wash. Maybe the hose bin was open. So, so there could be lots of, uh, other than a leak. There, there could be other ways that the water. We got checked into, and he gave me a, a terrific house. document. And I, I don't have a, what is that? Um, when you're watering your so sprinkler. Nice. I don't have a soaker hose. I don't have any of that. And, and there was certainly nothing attached to my house. 
from October to December. Well, that you're, that you're aware of. Right. <laughs> so I think that, in a sense, is a problem. And, you know, yes, the process is such that, you know, there's a process for you to be able to come and appeal your bill. So there is a process, you know, and, um, and I appreciate the fact that you also put through an offer that you thought would be a fair offer, so I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't get the sense that there's votes here to do that, but I think that's the hardest part for us. You know, you have to, again, understand from our perspective, the hardest part is because of the, you know, the thoroughness of trying to talk about it. I mean, we have the water guy. Mm -hmm. He's not the water guy, he's our, you know, whatever, but our commissioner of water and stuff, mm -hmm. who did come out, who did do the research, who did even saying, I can't find anything mm -hmm. to justify saying that that water wasn't used. You know, well, was used. That's well, no, 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 the meter says the water was used. So the, here's the problem for us, okay? And I understand from your perspective, okay, please, I really do understand that. You're not around, you're not there, you don't use that much water, whatever kind of stuff. And so from your perspective, you did not use that water, okay? And there's a good chance you might not have used that water. The meter saying though know, that you used it, Chris can't find anything to contradict what the what um, the meter is saying. And so things that like Marty's getting to and other people are, but there was access to use that water, maybe not by you, but by somebody who came over when you weren't there. So yes, you might not have used the water, but the water still might have been used and we can't close down the options that show there's no way that that water got used. And that's why it's difficult for us to sort of say, okay, well, we'll just forgive, you know, that water usage because we I'm don't have nothing to forgive it. I'm, not, I'm asking the town to share the responsibility of it because I did, didn't use it. That's that's what I'm saying to you. I don't understand why I, I wouldn't have support for that. It's, it's not a question of whether you used it or somebody else used it. It's, it's we have this policy that says if our meters are functioning and they say the water is used, like Marty was saying, maybe you weren't there and somebody else used it. So until you prove to me that that meter reading is wrong, I have to stick to the policy of the town, which is not to make exceptions when there isn't a really strong case for it. So I would love to make an exception, but I'm not hearing from you that this meter that we have somehow wasn't registering the proper amount of flow. So I don't have anything to go with that's going to convince me to change the rule. I'm not asking you to change the rule. I'm really not. What, I, what, I, what I'm simply saying is, is there is enough in this documentation that says that there was no leak on my property. Well, and, and I did, my neighbors across the street had the same problem. Uh, and the differentiation in their bill, there, there was a toilet leak in it. So, but it wasn't $400. I mean, what I'm talking about now is the amount of water that I'm being charged for. And I wish you gave me an explanation for how that reading is not correct, because I, I don't have that. Uh, I think you do actually, but we could sit here and discuss this all night, and it's, you know, if, if you're taking a stance, then I just have to take it to the next step. I'm That's, sorry you have to do that. I am too. I'm really disappointed. I, I, you know, I, I, uh, we have over a thousand meters in this community, and don't have any error rate like this ever. I mean, I'm telling you, no, my, 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 my husband no, lived there for 22 no. years. I have 22 years worth of records. I have 40 years worth of records of my mother's in law's house next door. We never had this problem. So it just doesn't seem so feasible. So how would you explain it? I don't know. So if, if it's been consistent, mm -hmm. then that kind of works against you because the meter is showing the proper usage. How could the usage for one day be an aberration in you know, this history? Well, it can't be one day because it's a three month period. Well, whatever it is. One yeah. quarter. One quarter. Yeah, it's a quarter. So, I, I, who knows, right? I mean, we don't even know when it happened, right? Well, see, that's, so. that's the problem. You, you don't know. And because we don't know, we have to kind of stick by the general rule, which is that we don't make exceptions. We can't. If the meter reading hadn't gone back to normal, I mean, I still 
still don't know where it would be an equipment problem, but I would understand it more that there's something, there's right. some crazy thing going on. Right. Um, but the fact that it went back to normal, I mean, it's the only conclusion I can come to for that is there was some new, it was excessive usage. Uh, that's not the only thing I can come I can't tell you if it went down the toilet, I can't tell you if it's a hose been left on, I can't tell you if they were broken out. But Million showers. I just don't know. Yeah. All I can do is go by that reading and go in and it went back to normal. So how can I make sure this doesn't happen to me again? You know, it's it's a mechanical device. There. Did she read her own meter? Sure. I just did read my own. Okay, so that would be one way for her to monitor her own. Yeah, water. We do I'm have doing that. people who read their own meters and they send in cards to us. But if you. Whenever you're home, once a week. I do that now. You should, okay. you know, I do that now because of this whole issue. Right. But I would also, what I'd also do is they turn off the valves from the inside so nobody could access that's your correct. water. That's what we you did. Know. That's uh -huh. that's when your uh -huh. I can't, Jeff, uh -huh. Jeff came out, uh -huh. and and we spent a couple of hours going over the uh -huh. property. So I'm very clear now, uh, what how it works, and I'm I'm very clear that we still don't have an answer to the problem. So I. I feel like I'm being um, bullied into something that is not to, you know. It's it's a, I, that, that's, I'm, I'm sorry that you feel that way, and I wish you, you know, and I, I'm sorry you feel that way. I, quite frankly, I appreciated your offer. I would make a motion to accept your offer, but I don't think there'll be support, so I'm not going to do that to my fellow board members because I don't think that's right. I think that everybody sitting up here wishes that you could give us something so we could hang our hat on, so we could do what you want us to do. I think the problem is that there has been nothing that's been given to us to make people feel comfortable that they're doing the right thing by settling the bill, and that's the problem. You know, Chris has been able to explain how everything, you know, from his perspective, through, you know, hours of studying it, you know, kind of stuff, he believes that it's right, you know, and everybody's sitting here listening, trying to find something that will make them feel comfortable. You think we want to say no to you? Do you think that, you know, you came out, you're here tonight, you spent the hours? Do you think we want to say no? Come on, really, honestly? You don't think that there's not everybody sitting here thinking, let's find something to justify yeah. us and let us be able to do this? And, Brock, we've, you know, so we've, <laughs> we've been putting you on the agenda for months. That meter's been sitting over there for... I know. So I mean, we've been waiting for you to come. I mean, we've been waiting for you to come. Truth be told, truth be told, because you know. I wasn't here last week. Right. And I did the agenda with Carol. I said, put the water bill on the agenda when I'm not here. Okay, so I was hoping it was going to be done last week, and when yeah. I came back and Carol put I the water bill on, now. and I said to Carol, why is this back on here? I wanted Jeff to handle it. We've had okay, it and she said, you are in here, and then we wanted to give you the courtesy and the time to come here. So unfortunately, I'm here tonight having to say to you, I can't help you. I didn't want to have to do that. So it's not, you know, that we're trying to, like, bully you or whatever. We're not. We're searching and, and to be able to give us the legal ability to do what we can legally, so it's not precedent in the future. Well, you did it for her, and you had no proof. No, 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 so, no, no, no. And, and so what the and, and you know, I mean, take take what you know, free legal advice is worth. But <laughs> to Kevin's point is, it's going to be very difficult to say. And the same information we have, I have 20 years of water bills with no problem, and now I get one, and then it went back to normal. Well, that's the evidence that shows it actually. Your water meters always worked. It never hasn't worked, and it went right back to normal again. But so it shows that you've had a working piece of equipment. It continued to work, they were, and then they following. weren't working. They weren't working in sync, and I, I still have a problem with that. But I'm not gonna, you know, I, I, there's not a lot I can do uh, other than give you the information that we can file. And I think it pretty strong. It pretty strongly presents that um, the leak. Is not existent. So well, I would call it an event. There was an event. A four hundred dollar event. There yes, was an event, I got right? it. Right. And the question is, who should be responsible for the event? And so, what you've offered me tonight is not enough for me to deviate from the general rule that events like this are the responsibility of the homeowner, unless we have some other proof. So, and I'm. I feel bad, but that's just what I'm dealing with. Now, if we just say, oh, let's just make an exception right now. Now we've created. Oh, neither of us want a precedent. I don't want a precedent. a precedent. You don't want a precedent. I'm telling you, I, I know how this works. Believe me, I do. Well, I'm 
sorry. We're, we're all sorry. We, we are, are very sorry. Too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Good night. Thank Good night, thanks. Okay, next, um, the, we have a food waste contract um, from Greenway Environmental Services, and um, what I'm going to do is table this because. Uh, we got Laura here. No, 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 Laura's here, oh. and Laura and I spoke for close to an hour tonight um, prior, so Laura knows she, um, everything we're going to do tonight. <laughs> you know, she's completely on board. She just chose to be here because she likes to spend time with us. Oh, no, that's okay. I, I was, no, I don't think the board didn't have to take action. I already approved it. It's just, it's in their budget. I just approve everything before anybody can, you know, whatever, and I already approved it today, so it's not a problem, but thank you. Um, and well, actually, though, so are we going to have her up here at all? Or well, no, this is the thing. I mean, we don't, she can come up if she wants. Well, the only reason was that I did want her to speak real briefly, though, about Zero Waste Day. Sure, she can come up. Come on up, Laura. And so, I mean, we can talk a very quickly a little I know bit it's about this. I it's already 9.30, but just if... Okay. I mean, we can... can give us nothing is going to Zero Waste Day was, was a great day out there, and I just wanted you to... Zero Waste Days are always great. Every year, Laura, since we've started this, I came back just when it got started, and I've been there every year at the Zero Waste, and they're phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. In fact, we, we lost Susan for a while because she found the puppies. <laughs> <laughs> they had... They had... It was a Zero Waste Day, right? And they have puppies at Zero Waste Day. And these are rescue squad puppies, okay? Rescue squad puppies. And they were the most rescue. beautiful puppies. I want them to take every single one of them home. They were gorgeous, gorgeous. And I went home and I talked to my son, I talked to my husband, and whatever. But the reason why they have puppies there is because the way it ties in with zero waste is people throw couches out and they put them out on the side of the road and then they get wet, they get disgusted, and they get whatever, and you can't use them. If you donate the couch to a shelter for animals, the puppies don't care if it's ripped. They don't care if it smells. They have a couch that they can go on to. Okay, simultaneously, a lot of people don't realize that the um, the shelters, the, the, the veterans, you know, the veteran, the veterinarians here in New Paltz, they need towers like crazy because they're always operating on the dogs and stuff, and they always need these towers that get a lot of blood on them, and then they throw them out and stuff. So they, so like, I'm consistently ever since I've learned this, when we go through our towels and we have little towels. We take them over to the vet. So they want you to understand that every aspect of your life has some kind of connection to zero waste, hence the puppies. And that's why Laura lost me because I was just fawning over these puppies. <laughs> because that was one of the questions, how do the puppies tie into zero waste? And, and I think the best way to explain it is because this is new pups. We've taken zero waste beyond the garbage concept. and. Um, it goes out there, it's not just environmental, but it's economic and social. And that was very evident when we did the, the campus clean out. I mean, we took out tons of food. Uh, we coordinated with a local church who had volunteers, and we got into multiple pantries, including family and their boss. Um, I just discovered there's a Christian food pantry out on the SUNY campus. And uh, it also went out to the teen shelter, and we're doing that with clothing as well. So the, uh, the Zero Waste event brought in um, many different types of people. We had the Pilgrim Pipeline components there. We had a uh, Mercedes that's run on vegetable oil. We had the puppies. We had, uh, we had uh, Solar Ice Hudson Valley, and um, also a, a person who does home energy audits. And then we had some local artists there. Uh, we also had Ripton Woodcrest, which was giving away six bushels of red lettuce. So it's just it's a nice community event to see how you can support each other and you know walk out with not just information but things to bring home. Um, we also had snackage out that was destined for the garbage, but because it was beyond its sell-by date. But there's nothing the matter with it. So um, and that also went to the teen shelter because we had quite a bit, so that was left over. So the, uh, the, the teens have grown very fond of our volunteer Joan and Vinnie Gallagher. Um, they do quite a bit for the community, and I'd really like to acknowledge all the help. They've been there for each event. They work very hard, and uh, they've done a lot. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. So, so before we leave, I mean, yeah. it's just it's the board that's made it so easy to do, and and the community of Boston. And as you and I were discussing, you have another part of your grant coming in. As soon as I get in the paperwork, uh, Arlene and Rachel to get me the um, the documentation. Um, so we're going to be going in on the, it's an eight-ton excavator, the, or is it, anyway, the eight-ton excavator, I'm wrong, 
anything. It's not a loader, right? It, it, it's, uh, it's to do the brush, so it's part of the, yes, uh, yeah, right, 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 it's yeah, part of the yeah, organics. Yeah, right, we'll also um, put in for the trommel screen because we had uh, incorporated a tub grinder into it, but the tub grinder is very expensive. Uh, and we'll see, I'll try putting in for the skid steer too, so you can pay a portion well, of that as well. Thank you. But that, that's 95000 Thank you. Look forward to getting that. <laughs> so, so stay here for Laura for a second. So just really quickly, so there's a food waste contract that Laura's been working on. Um, do you want to just explain it really quickly? We're not going to vote on it tonight because um, when I looked at the contract, I just, because it's a private company that was we're looking to do like this deal with, even though we end up benefiting, quite frankly, it just felt like there was something wrong with it, and I sent it to Joe Moriello for him to review. And Joe wrote a long thing about concerns and questions and not saying that this was a bad idea, but because we're a municipality and a private company, there were questions that he had that needed to be answered, uh, which Laura then ended up writing him some answers, mm -hmm. and we haven't gotten the answers back for us to be comfortable to move forward with this tonight. Um, so hopefully we can move forward with it. It'll be a great idea. I'll let Laura explain it. But we're not going to take action because we have to get um, some stuff back from our attorney. So do you want to just explain quickly what this is? Yeah, um, the, the company is, um, is offering to um, have a hauler bring in food waste into our composting facility, which is, is still registered. Uh, we're not currently taking anything except for a few uh, events where we might get a, a, a yard, if that. Um, we would like to start taking the material in because we've almost gone through all of our processed and screened food waste. It's uh, compost is absolutely gorgeous. This beautiful, moist, red worm filled soil. Um, and uh, we'd like to start producing some more. So I guess it's just a matter of uh, looking at the terms of the agreement. But uh, uh, the person, he's very reputable. He's been in business for 30 years throughout the Hudson Valley. And uh, I think that's why he's able to um, contact and, and contract bringing the food waste uh, the way he is. And he's also offered some training. Uh, specifically, we're concerned about vectors. We don't want the pros to come back. And uh, he's, he has a, a better technique which will create the food waste quicker. Instead of 60 days, we're probably looking at 30 to 45. What's his benefit? Uh, his benefit is a, a, a portion of the tipping fee and um, a portion of the finished product. And does he have other potential outlets for this material other than for us? As, as far as the initially incoming the, the portion of it? The food waste. Yeah, the incoming portion of it, he, he does have a registered facility himself. Um, we are all held to that thousand yards or 500 tons, which is really limited. Um, that's really uh, the main hauler that is servicing the area would fill a facility up such as ours in six months. So you need to find other capacity. But, uh, so he's got his his location, our location. There's there's actually five registered facilities in, in the area. It's nice to have capacity. It is nice to have capacity, yes. And, and a product just one. Okay, that's, that's Kevin, if you hadn't yep. seen it. I know Carol posted stuff. I saw Joe's stuff. letter. Yeah, and then I forwarded you Joe's letter, you know, for you to, uh, so, you know, if we can make this work, we can make this work. We can put it on the agenda again. We just can't take action tonight. Let's make it work. Perhaps maybe next meeting. professional yeah. services. The next meeting the ninth or the next meeting the uh, third Thursday? The third Thursday. Okay. okay. I don't um, want to add that to the night. We're not adding it to the night unless it's ready. We'll see. No, uh, I, I, will I, it, will yeah. the other contract be? No, well, that's what I want. Well, that's what we have. So now, actually, interesting enough, I do not see the RRA on the um, agenda, but it's in my agenda packet. So um, we, we're not going to take action on this tonight either. Laura and I talked at length about this. We talked with Dave Clouser. We got a contract from the Resource Recovery Agency for our recycling center. Uh, and they sent it to us last week, and they want it signed by July 17th. Well, a contract with the RA is never that simple. And giving it to us and having us have um, literally like three weeks to look at it, and then also not knowing if it's round top board meetings is really crazy. But we got it. I looked at it, and I had some concerns when I looked at it. I sent it to Dave Clouser and to Laura. Dave had some concerns with it, and Laura felt that there's some things we could tweak that would make it okay. But the long and the short of it is we actually have a solid waste agreement with the RA from 1992, when they first closed our landfill. And um, 
honestly, that is our contract. And to enter into a new contract is something we might not actually want to do. We might want to just amend mm -hmm. the other contract, which might be better and actually more fair to both of us because the contract right now seems to be a little one-sided towards the RRA, not really in our favor. So anyway, so basically we just got it. I reviewed it, just got back Dave's comments, um, which I will forward to all of you. Um, Laura wrote me her comments today. And so Dave, Laura, and I talked and um, we said that what we would do is get you know get this the 1992 contract if we can get that out to everybody we can look at the 92 contract you can look at the new contract then we can determine where we want to go with it and we'll probably have to have this conversation on the july 9th agenda because we're supposedly technically supposed to start it by the 17th and um we might want to start to negotiate with them uh, again like this is being sent out to all the towns but we have a different situation with them ourselves lloyd and ulster have a separate situation with the RA because they closed our landfill and paid for the closing, where all the other towns closed their own landfills. So we have a separate agreement with them, like Lloyd and like Ulster. So we don't necessarily have to go with this contract kind of thing. So we, we'll get you the stuff, you could look at it. Dave, I think, suggested that we just work with the 92, the solid waste management contract. This was a little bit more in their favor than 92. So we'll, we'll get all the stuff to you. And, um, and then we'll put it on the agenda for the night to talk. But I also think what we need is for um, everybody to sort of, Kevin and Jeff, I need you to listen, is that I need you guys to look at this and sort of give you your feedback if, you know, as soon as you can because if we need to go negotiate with them, well, or else we can come up with a strategy on the night and then set up a meeting to negotiate with them. negotiate with them. Bill. Did you hear that? No. Good. Well, I heard it. I wasn't listening. <laughs> so you didn't hear Kevin's comment. No, it's not me. I didn't say it. Kevin said it. I do. <laughs> We're trying to get along. When you have contracts that are so one-sided, it's like negotiating with a mob. There is no, no negotiation, right? When they're so one-sided. Did uh, UCRA show up too, or is there a waste there? Their recycling coordinators is um, uh, the, the positions vacant right now. Anyway, so I mean, there is a chance that like we could try to open up negotiations and try to negotiate with them, uh, and that might be what we want. But we have to make a decision, and we only have. What happens if we don't sign up by July seventeenth? What happens? I don't know. We'd have to find out January first. I mean, if we didn't sign on, we would set out our own containers and haul along. We're already hauling to the transfer station. It would just be a matter of managing the recycling. And we have As a roll-off truck. And one of the so things that we... Do we have a contingency plan for that if, if we don't pre yeah. okay. But see, this is part of the problem, Kevin. One of the things, because we talked about that, about do we have to truly go with the RRA and can we just do this on our own? The thing is, in the 92 contract, um, basically, our contract is tied to their bonds. And as long as the bonds, they have bonds, our contract keeps getting extended. So we're, the, our contract with the RA is supposed to, our contract was supposed to end in 2012. Okay, but because they keep refinancing the bonds, our contract is tied to the refinancing of the bonds. I made a comment to Dave and to Laura today saying it can't be one-sided where, you know, they choose to keep refinancing, so now we're bound by this contract consistently because they're always going to continually to refinance. I said there's got to be, no. Oh, so Dave Clauser read through it because Laura had pointed you know, that out to me, and then we pointed it out to Dave, and then Dave read through it, and so we were trying to parse the language, you know. But this was at five o'clock tonight, and that's when we said, "Look, we'll just get the contracts when we look at them." You know, Dave Lett was the one who probably signed it, so he's around to talk to about what his intent was. You know. You don't think it'll be able to make it back and forth to Kingston? Now, what I will say is I have a 
negotiate many an RA contract and I would hope not to have to negotiate this one. So anybody else who would be willing to step up to the plate, I sort of had myself, that's for sure. But anyway, regardless, we should all look at this, look at it and see if and how I had my fill. I had my fill. And uh, what was I going to say? Uh, hey, you want to talk about the mob? I had the FBI interview me about the RA and uh, many scary nights. But anyway, so um, <laughs> what was I going to say? That uh, I had a conversation with my husband about me after my FBI interview. So anyway, um, I can't, seriously, it's scary. It'll be something for you to follow up there. <laughs> I have no idea what this story is, but it's got it's got it, yeah. I, 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 I'll, okay, I'll, I'll, no, I'll, I'll build up with it, get them around. No, no, I'll yeah. just share it really quickly where the chief for the chief, chief Africa at the time comes over to me, um, this is back in 1997, and he's at a funeral of a police officer, and the FBI guy comes, goes over to him and said, I need to speak with your supervisor, will you set up a meeting? And uh, next thing I know, I'm sitting and I'm being interviewed by the FBI, and I'm not used to being interviewed by the FBI, I was used to talking to police officers and stuff. And then uh, afterwards, the chief took me out to lunch, and we were sitting outside of the locust tree, and the chief said to me, the FBI agent said that, you know, um, he was very impressed with everything you had to say. And the chief said, he asked the FBI agent, um, you know, Susan's very, very outspoken, do you think her life is in danger? And the FBI agent said, no, that's what's keeping her safe. <laughs> So that's my experience with the RA. You guys are more than willing to pick it up and <laughs> take it over for me. <laughs> anyway, with that said, let's figure out where we're going to go and what we're going to do. Right. Okay? okay. <laughs> Anything else, Laura? <laughs> thank you, Laura. Thank you for allowing me to do it, Laura. Thank you. Thank you for putting those brands in. Okay. So real quick, okay, the youth contract. The youth contract is is um, what the youth contract is is. It's just a matter of the county doing things differently and the state doing things differently. It used to be that um, the county would, the state, the town would directly get the money for the summer youth program that we do, that we get reimbursed. And now it's going through the county and we have to enter into a contract with the county to basically get the money. So it closes your contract with the Ulster County Youth Bureau for your town summer recreation program for 2015. As of the 2014 budget year, OCFS no longer reimburses the towns and municipalities directly. That change has necessitated the new processing which requires contracts between the municipality and the county. Please be assured the Youth Bureau will process your submitting claims for expenditure once your contract has been finalized. Please start to return both contracts to the Youth Bureau in the closed envelope along with the current certificates of insurance for workers' compensation, disability, and liability. And um, we I got, and so, so we have all, so we have. I, I move that the board authorize the supervisor to sign the town uh, summer recreational contract for the summer recreational program. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, fine, great. Next thing we have is court radios. Is Carol, did, did you get involved in this? Yes, court I radios? did, actually, and I even actually, uh, he, he gave me uh, Bill's contact information at the Bill and I called as a his last name in Nikon. And I come from. And I, what's his name? Tuthill. Thank you. And I spoke to him, uh, and you'll feel good too. I mean, the price we're getting is based on many factors. There is no movement in the price. It's a price we're also sharing with the police department. There are several reasons he explained to me why we don't want to use their frequencies and radios they have. It actually would actually cost you just more. And more. We told me it was a so just, just, just so you guys know, because first you need to just explain it quickly. These are four, four radios that the court clerks were. And so in the past, you know, the police department used to be right there, and things were a lot safer. And ever since, the police have been moved out, and there's been issues with the buildings and sort of problems. And so sometimes when something happens in the court, sometimes the court officers are like in the back or something, or the clerks in the back, and they need to communicate with each other and communicate to the police. So the court, the, um, the, um, Court administration staff had asked for us to get these four um, four radios that um, complement the police radios, right? Yes. It's the same thing as the, so, um, so this way they can get the they police. Can whatever. With they can communicate with each other. They can communicate, communicate, with, communicate with the police, and you know we'd have to protect the yes. clerks. Mm -hmm. It's just you know yes. I, it's just just that's the life of the radio. They, 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 they service it. It's all maintained, so if one's broken, So this is a 16-month lease? Yes. Yep. And they'll bring down a new one. If something goes wrong, they service them all. 
just took a little out of the sun. Uh, yeah, they yeah. service them all. They do everything. Spoke to them also. If you could change it, they can. But then it changes some of what they'll maintain. So they can go wrong with them. They'll cover all of them. It's our justice court personnel need things. Yes, so we have to do it. I spoke okay. to I spoke to Becky. She gave me the justification also. It is it is in her budget. I know that we authorize a supervisor to enter into a, it may be a lease amendment agreement mm -hmm. that adds the additional radios for four personnel, but it's a 60 month lease, $240 a month. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion so carried. Okay, great. Moving next, um, the, traffic the traffic study <coughs> issue. So let me give you a little background. Um, when I came back, into the town as, you know, as a supervisor. We started dealing with um, Len Drive and um, Danskin Way and all of the problems and all of the issues. We were consistently hearing about the problems on the road, the traffic, the speeding, the dangerous situation. Uh, it has never settled itself in. There's still a problem. We still get notes and letters all the time from um, from um, the people from Danskin Way and from whatever. So when we were dealing with this way back when and we were putting a lot of time into this road, I had sort of said back then, look, there's a lot of roads in the town of Newport that have speeding problems and have other issues. Um, you constantly, um, we just got a letter from Dan and Ann Gunther. When you come down Mountain Rest Road, where the aqueduct is, you make the turn. There's a lot of accidents. A couple, you know, they said that there one week there were two accidents. People had to go to the hospital. You know, there's you know, a lot of problems there. I know living on Butterville Road when I used to live there, and you know, you want to talk about cars going fast and people walking and people jogging and walks out of the road and little kids, and I was always terrified of that something was going to happen. So when we were dealing with the um, Lent Drive situation, I had commented back then that maybe we could do a holistic traffic study for the entire town, sort of identify where the areas really are, and you know, you know, we can't just address one road all the time. We have to sort of look at a bigger issue kind of thing. So we talked about it two years ago. We got involved in a lot of other things. Again, recently, things have started up with Glen Drive with some very dangerous situations. We got the Dan Gunther letter. So I sort of felt like now was the time to maybe take this on and whatever. So I um, talked to Dave Clouser and asked Dave you know, how feasible it was to do some kind of traffic study. And I'll just read to you what Dave um, um, wrote. And then I had a conversation with Gail Gallery, who's the head of the Transportation Implementation Committee. So she and I went out yesterday and spoke. After we spoke, we came up with a plan. Then we got Dave's response. I sent it to Gail, and Gail said, well, this seems to back up what we were coming up with. So let me read you what Dave wrote, and let me just um, tell you where we're thinking about going, okay? Um, hi, Susan. I spoke to Ken Worstead, the PE of Creighton Manning Engineers, who has been the town planning board's traffic engineering consultant for a number of years about investigating and reporting on areas in town that have a history of traffic safety issues. As I understand the matter from our telephone discussion, the outcome of the investigation would be to prepare a brief report that could be used by the town to request DOT to consider traffic safety improvements at these locations. Ken said that he would suggest to minimize costs for the investigation that a list of known areas of concern be prepared from citizens' complaints and known local traffic safety concerns. With this list, he would get the DOT traffic accident records for the past several years to review. These records give the reasons that accidents occurred and the rates, the locations according to the state's averages for accidents at similar locations. With this information, he would spend some time on field visits to review these locations and other local road areas that may be on the list to see what might be an improvement. A brief report of his finding would be prepared with recommendations. This report could be forwarded to the DOT with a request for assistance to make the necessary improvements. Ken said the cost of what he's expecting would be needed based on similar work he has done for other communities has a pretty wide range depending on the number of problem areas and to the extent additional traffic engineering investigations are needed. He'd expect the low end would be $2,000 and a medium cost for a community the size of New Newports would be about $10,000. He emphasized that the more legwork work that can be accomplished by the town Compiling a list of locations to be investigated and sorting and preliminary review of DOT accident records would keep the investigation close to the lower side of the cost range. Ken said that he will be meeting with the New York State DOT traffic safety engineer in the next few days and will ask what the best process might be for the town to ask for the DOT's assistance with remedies to known traffic safety issues. He said he would pass on what they would expect the best method would be for the intervention. 
Let me know if the board wishes to proceed with this investigation and if the Transportation Implementation Committee would be the point of contact and I'll pass this information on to Ken. Please feel free to call with any questions. So Gail and I met and what Gail and I sort of sort of came to as a sort of maybe a way to approach this was first she's got to go to the TIC committee to ask if they want to be the lead on this or do we want to create a sort of subcommittee of um, people from TIC, people from the board, people from the community, but does the town board want to take this on? And what I said to Gail is my preference would be for the TIC to take the lead and we would work with them and make the resources available because these people are volunteering to focus on these issues. We have enough stuff to do on this board. But we sort of agreed that we would sort of work together to figure something out. What we both sort of agreed that we thought, and Gail was talking about a lot of work she's done with Dennis Doyle and the county on traffic stuff and you know where there's always this sort of this push and pull and these problems and whatever. So we sort of agreed that probably the best approach would be, and that was before I got Dave's letter, was she'll talk to her committee, but simultaneously that we can hold a public meeting as a board, invite people to come to meet with us and we can start to create a list of like I know Butterville Road's a problem. Dan Winfield's gonna come tell us Lake Drive's a problem. There are probably gonna be people from Plains Road who are gonna come and tell us that Plains Road is a problem. People will come and tell us Mount West Road is a problem. I already have the letter from whatever. You know, let people come, let people tell us what their problems are, what their issues are. We constantly have um, someone come and tell us about people coming up on, um, on North Mannheim Road, you know, right down by on the pizza place and right down there and they're constantly going through and they're not stopping at the stop signs and you know we'll have him come and talk to us kind of thing so we can start to create the list we can sort of have the TIC help us get whatever information possible then we could potentially sit down with the traffic engineer to say how do we scope this out where do we go from here and then come up with a plan and what, what, what about the back end I think we should also be aware of what the back end would be in terms of the remedies uh -huh. and things like that so you do all this work well, you identify all these things, and then you find there's nothing. Yeah. Well, that's part of that's part of what we would do before we get the track. So that's part of like, as a matter of fact, what Dave said with this um, guy um, from Creighton Manning Engineers. He emphasized um, basically. He said, um, okay, that um, Ken said he will be meeting with the DOT traffic engineer in the next few days, and will ask what best process might be the town to ask for the DOT's assistance with remedies to known traffic safety issues. Yeah. Exactly, okay, and he said he would pass it on um, what they would expect the best method would be as to intervention. Now we do have somebody in the town who worked for the DOT. I don't think he works there anymore. He's on our transportation implementation committee. He's always been really valuable to us when we're trying to talk about DOT stuff. He's been really valuable helping us with this infamous bus stop shelter that we've been oh. trying to get for four years, you know, kind of stuff. Okay, he's so, still, we must call that. He's still the DOT? Did he move up? Okay. Yeah, he's still okay. I got an email that's a long ago. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, I know. I'm sorry I wasn't here to be here. He did be here for the bus stop shelter. We yeah. spent only three years on that. But, um, so, you know, we don't have to necessarily take any action tonight. We can. We don't have to. I wanted to share, you know, the fact that I sort of reached out to Dave to get this going. I talked to Gail to get this going. I wanted to bring it to the board so we can get something going. How we all want to proceed, I don't know. Um, but I do think it's about time that we just have to start to sort of like really look and see what we can do and if we can do anything because, you know, there's a lot of accidents waiting to happen and I don't want it to be on our watch. So I don't know if anybody has any ideas or suggestions of how they think we should proceed. I have a question. Sure. In task when recommendations have been given to DOT, and this kind of goes to what I think Kevin yeah. Survey. You have a report, you have recommendations, it's documented. What have they done in the past to remediate? I can't completely answer that. I think sometimes you might get remediation, sometimes you get no remediation. I think it depends on the threshold and what's going on. I mean, there's things like, like you know, you got the light by the high, by the um, head station in um, Highland, you know, right on, because there has to be so many accidents with so many deaths before they put up a light. And unfortunately, Christmas Eve, two sisters got killed, you know, and that was the threshold. And then all of a sudden, a light went up. But it took two sisters dying for that light to go up. So things happen, you just have to meet their threshold. Sometimes their threshold is not acceptable. We need, we need like you were saying, we need to know 
what those thresholds are, because obviously they know what they are. Mm -hmm. They make the decisions. So I, I think, I think yeah, we should try to find what that bag mm -hmm. is. Now, I made a suggestion to do a just brainstorming with Gail, and I, you know, I don't even know if it's anything even feasible, but I was like saying to Gail, okay, so if we can't lower traffic, like in other words, if it's 40 miles an hour and we want to lower it to 30, but we can't because we have to get permission, could we actually investigate maybe doing some kind of home rule that says, okay, if you get caught speeding, you know, you know, over, you know, you know, you get caught speeding over whatever, can we do a fine over and above, like a home rule that, like in other words, some kind of fine over and above. I mean, are there things we can do through local ordinances to try to get control on a situation that we have no control over? Is there a way for us to maybe start to look at that? There is an interesting thing that just happened with New York City and Mayor de Blasio who went to the state legislator to ask to drop the speed limits on certain roads. Mm -hmm. It had not happened before. And it did set that precedent that municipalities could do that. Did they do that? They did. They eventually passed mm -hmm. it. So, I mean, we could also look at an option, too, where if there were areas that we thought were state roads as well that should be lowered, we could take that avenue as it has been done. Mm -hmm. So we're part of the remedy. I'm sorry, what? We can be part of the remedy. We, we could do that. Mm -hmm. What? I, I thought that only passed for the city because we've been unable to change any speed limits on state and county roads based no, on the state law. law. I, I, I'm pretty sure, and I will look into it, that they did pass it. It was a look, contentious could, thing. If you could look happened. into it, because yeah. I also know that I think what they did in the city also was we, Jim, uh, actually it was Jim Littlefoot who was here mm -hmm. tonight, yep. who when I first came into office, he was really on these red lights. He wanted the red lights, the red lights, the red lights, did a lot of speeding. And we did a lot of research into it, and um, it's not legal in New York State yet, but I think they did something in New York City where they allowed New York City to do the red lights. You're talking about speed, the radar. Mm -hmm. not, no, no, the, the cameras. The cameras. The cameras. Yeah, they yeah. to do that There's, in the city of Kingston. Too. And I think, and I don't think. still not allowed in. I don't think you're allowed, but I think I saw something that said that in New York City that they allowed New York City to do the red they lights. They might be doing a test and with them. I think they're doing a test in New York City of the red lights, and oh, I was like, oh, well, maybe we could probably. You know, yeah. So if you could look into that, yeah, it should be you know, easy to and, find. Um, the red you know, light, could, you red know, light cameras are. Obviously, you know, the engineers do a little research for us. Obviously, you know, they'll get back to Dave. So maybe we could just wait to get a little feedback yeah. from them, right. and then we can start the schedule. But Marty, to also answer your question, I, I'll use the example we did. We had it a few years back, is when Stop and Shop was rebuilding. Uh, one of the conditions, uh, and the traffic study showed that we needed to add a right-hand turn lane by Dunkin' Donuts coming off of Cherry Hill. That was one of the actually just got completed. Chris, what was that completed about a, less than a year ago? We finally completed that right turn lane. But it involved moving the telephone pole and utilities. Mm -hmm. uh, but the DOT supported that that was a final traffic study. So at times, yes, they will listen. Uh, out by Woodland Pond, the traffic study did show that the speed limit should be reduced to 35. That was a traffic study. Does that ring a bell? Like, but that's actually one. That was spill, but they and what happened is the DOT stated no, they're not interested in that. They kept it at 45. So sometimes they do take it, other times they. But they don't absolutely just shell. No. Okay, so next, um, Walbury CFA. And so we're in a situation where we were asked to, um, I was asked to write a letter of support for Walbury for a CFA grant that they were going for. I emailed. Um, George Lithgow was saying, is this even appropriate for me to do it, being that they're in front of the planning board? He reminded me that we did it for Mohan Preserve when they asked for a CFA, that we weren't, we were supporting their right to go do it, we were somewhat supporting the project, but you know, of course it has to go through the whole entire secret process and whatever, so we're not, whatever. But so I did call to find out what the CFA was for, because I said obviously before we we're going to move forward with something, um, so the CFA was being done for the purposes of really offsetting the cost of building Walberry Lodge. So um, Joe, so George put together a resolution very similar to the resolution um, that we did for Milbrook, for Mohonk Preserve, which talks about a generic sort of support for them to go for CFA, but talks all about the secret process and how you know you know it has to go through the process and has to meet all the environmental reviews and you know, all the things that basically in essence say we're not, we're not undermining the process. What ended up happening since was I did get a letter from um, Steve Densmore, who's the uh, 
one writing the grant for this, but they're not actually going for a CFA, but they might be going for some other kind of thing, you know, for another grant, but it's not a CFA. So with a CFA, you actually need the local municipality to do it, which is why we had to do the Mohawk one. So they're sort of saying they don't need it, but if, you know, George was suggesting that if I still wanted to write a letter as a supervisor on behalf of the project, so I felt like I wanted to bring this to the board because I suspect, uh, A, it was on the agenda, so I can't take it off without you know the board taking it off. So it depends. I mean, we could still go ahead and do the resolution, and I'm sure they'll appreciate it. I'm sure it'll help their grant. Um, I could just write a letter just doing generic support. Um, it's really, or we could do nothing. So it's really up to the board in terms of how they would like to proceed. Do you want to just do a, a generic letter of support if it doesn't technically need board action? Um, I mean, if you want to authorize me to do them, I mean, I have a letter that George yeah. drafted pretty much. Okay. They drafted a letter. George and I were not completely happy with the letter because it was really, in essence, giving too much. It was like sort of basically rolling out the red carpet and saying, you know, it was a little more than is probably appropriate to do. But then George wrote back and said, well, if you want to use this letter in a sense. So, I mean, if you guys feel comfortable with me just sending this letter of basically saying we support you know, um, while very large, pursuing grant money, you know, you know, for you know, for, for their ability to what's the cost to build it, that. if everybody's okay so with that. That sounds like a motion. Just right. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion. And if we want, Stephen uh, lives in New Paltz, yeah. so if we think we want to ever find anything more about their grants, I'm sure we can yeah. invite them and you'd be more than happy to come in. Okay. So next, um, can we do the other CFA? Oh, sure. As long as we're on that. Okay. So that was added for the CFA for the LED street lights. So Jen Metzger, who is on the town board in Rosendale, and also is very involved in Citizens for Local Power, um, who she's been working on a lot of things to make local communities have the ability to control their own power grid and control the costs and be more um, energy efficient and use more renewable energy. They were meeting with a bunch of the supervisors to put together a grant which is a CFA grant with all the town, bunch of towns going together to ask for a actual um, grant to be able to put um, LED street lights in all of our towns. Mm -hmm. And so we're being asked to support, um, you know, New Falls was part of the planning, so we have three meetings with municipalities and a co-group, the Sophus, New Falls, Olive, Platagill, Rosendale, Wappages Falls, City of Newburgh, and Tivoli. The city of Kingston's in support, but already pursuing their own project. Um, assistance and support are being provided by the Ulster County Office of the Environment and Dutchess County Planning Department. We're also in touch with, in close touch with the governor's energy policy staff, who have provided important feedback as this proposal has developed. And the approach would be a feasibility study to confirm eco economics of LED conversion to include utility buyout options and evaluation of purchase models versus utility LED tariff participation by municipalities. This will be formed by a recognized leader with LED street lighting experience. There will be an RFP for development for manufacturing, lighting installs, financial solutions, an IMA for you know, the legalities, and on and on. So what we're being asked to do is to put in a letter for the CFA for the town of Newport. Uh, uh, just quickly, because uh, they did attend a few of the meetings. If anybody wants to attend as well, I, I'm on the email list. I can certainly share that out. Uh, we'd also be the first municipality to pass this as this letter was formalized late last night. So I think that's enough. Second. Any discussion? If anyone wants to, or there's also, uh, there's also well, discussion. July 7th, there's a webinar. We're going to go on that then. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a webinar coming on up on it that's going to have uh, Patty Strong is going to or Pat Courtney Strong is going to be going along with. Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. <laughs> well, okay. Aye. Okay. Motion so carried. Okay, Rosanna, I have this stuff. I can give it to you if you don't have it. But I think Carol did. Uh, okay. So, drum rolls. Now's the time for Millbrook Preserve. <laughs> okay. So. Um, <laughs> that's why we put you on. <laughs> do you um, do you want to do you want to do this, Marty? Yeah. Go for it. Do you want to explain it? Do you want to? Um, I think Marty's got a, I think Marty's got, a, I think Marty's got a pretty good hand on this one. He's been around this one for a while. I'm, this one I'm really speaking to my neighbors. Uh, for a long time, there's been effort to develop a preserve behind Dugan School. Some of the land the town acquired uh, in 
2011, I believe, 6.33 acres, and the village may be acquiring some more. We're in the process of the town and the village coordinating closely together for the village to make an application for consolidated funding application and grant money uh, through the state, uh, parks department <coughs> specifically, in order to improve the property, build a trailhead, trails, some bog bridges, and uh, one or two other possible bridges. Um, the village is taking the lead on this. Um, when this passes, it will acknowledge that the village will become responsible for the ongoing management of the effort. And uh, this is a resolution that begins the process of the village and the town uh, continuing to, to work closely together towards a common goal. Okay, and I'll just add a little bit before we do it. Um, because I'd like to thank the new mayor, Tim Rogers, because, uh, you know, we've been, we started with like trying to do this grant and doing it as a joint grant. And then we were trying to find a grants writer to help us. And then ultimately what happened was the village planner had decided that he could do the work and whatever. And so Tim and I spoke about the village taking the lead and the fact that there could only be one um, municipality that does it and that the village would do it nice that's fine. Um, in a CWAS meeting when we talked about this, we sort of talked about the town and the village actually sharing um, um, the expenses for Milford Preserve and whatever. And in the conversation with Jeff, Jeff had sort of said, you know, that his preference in a way would be for them, for the village to take, you know, over sort of the management of Milford Preserve and the operational cost of Milford Preserve because we're already doing Moriello Pool and Park, and we, you know, and it's easier when one municipality sort of takes a leadership role. So I sort of expressed that to Tim and said, you know, Tim, you know, we probably just need to have a conversation with the two boards before we bring anything forward because, you know, you know, like Jeff, you know, Jeff has, you know, you know, sort of would like to see that this happen. So the next time I talked to um, Tim, Tim had told me that they were putting in the resolution that they were going to take over total operation, they were going to take over total maintenance and that you know we would basically then um, split the cost of sort of what we might call capital but like in other words the cost of developing like if we had to do um, like, like a survey or we had to do certain things that we would share the cost and because he was doing the resolution Wednesday night he talked we talked on Tuesday we were having our meeting tonight I said Tim look I said we have to get this done you don't want there to be any problems where the town you village does it and then we have issues. I said, so what I think would be the best, and I can assure that we'll pass this board tonight, um, even though I did not talk to Jeff, but I know Jeff will end up agreeing with it and stuff. I said, instead of saying that we'll split, you know, the cost, you know, like some of the fixed costs, let's do it where we pay them proportionally how much property we own in Millbrook Preserve versus how much property you own in Millbrook Preserve. So if we have 25% of the property and they have 75%, we pay 25% of the cost and they pay 75% of the cost of these expenses. And I said, this way we can be assured that there won't be any problems with our board tonight. You have to go back and redo it. And so when I did get the resolution from Tim, he put the language in about, um, he put the language in that said it would be proportional in terms of right here. Um, while still retain, um, whereas the town of New Post has expressed a desire for the village to assume the lead role in design, improvement, and repair of the entire Millbrook Preserve property, while still retaining input on all such issues, as well as proportionate financial responsibility for the initial stages of organization of the entire newly constituted preserved property, and thereafter such maintenance and operational financial responsibility decision making shall be within the sole purview of the village. So, quite frankly, in two phone conversations with myself and Tim that lasted all of about 10 minutes, we were able to sort of work this all out in a way and make it pretty simple. I know the village board passed it, and I don't really see why there should be any problems with the town about passing it. Do you have a second? Discussion? I'd like to discuss too. I mean, yeah. One of the what's the largest park in the town? Mm -hmm. What? How much we pay for that? The largest park in the town is Rail Trail, Savage Trail. How do we pay for it? We have volunteer. We've got there you go. We have well, actually, actually, well, well you're, we have a Rail Trail Association. So, what I what I'd like to see that too. I, what I had also discussed with you and discussed with previous administration there and. You gotta remember, I was the one who also helped and Marty remember when we got the very first piece of land from the Orcots. And I spent a lot of time on that. I'm a big supporter, I'm a big supporter of this piece of land. Uh, this does seem like an opportunity though, and, and I'd like to hear the board's input on it, 
for this also to become a piece of land that would be supported by a group that is very similar to the Rail Trail Association. Yes. It would be able to support this and it would not become something that is, uh, you know, where we're going to our taxpayers asking for the money on this. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. It gives me an opportunity to talk about our friends group. Right. Um, <laughs> I will be the first one to write a check. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we're not yet to the point of asking well, for contributions. Let me know. We will get there. I will gladly write uh, the first check to you. That, that was something that uh, was identified um, by Seth McKee a, a while ago. And actually, just so you know, Seth and I discussed that a few years ago also. Yes. So I have discussed this with multiple people. Yes. No, it was a good idea. Well, you, you know, and, and this is partly speaking to, to our audience, that um, Seth McKee and Michael Zeeler have been working on this effort for over 12 years and have remained tenacious. We just uh, got the plan from Michael a few months ago. Yes, and, and we're still yep. we're still working towards our goal. Um, we have set up a friends group, <coughs> the Friends of Millbrook Preserve. And uh, as of yesterday, there's a, a Facebook page, and I'm embarrassed that I can't tell you the, what to search to find that, but I think it is The Friends of Millbrook Preserve. Millbrook is three words. Um, and uh, Julie Lillis, our neighbor, and her husband Mike, who have a tremendous amount of outdoor experience. Julie is intimately familiar with the land within the, the preserve, uh, has been helpful in our present process of laying out trails. We have a preliminary trail map. We're going to finalize that on Saturday. Uh, and to, to get really to your, your, your question, um, the, the Friends Group will take on a, a major role in the maintenance of the infrastructure when it, once it has been created. Uh, this is pretty typical within this type of a uh, community uh, park. Uh, so, so there will be a lot that will be done by them. As I understand the, the resolution before us, it's talking about there being a shared contribution during this process of making application for grant funds, not on an ongoing basis. That's I'm not I, sure. That's how I read it. Yeah. Yes. It's just really to sort of. So then if we look at what those costs might be by categories, um, as I say, the, the friends group and volunteers uh, are working on laying out the trails, pricing out the trails, even and, and the bog bridges and the stream bridges, and, and even uh, doing the schematic drawings of those, all and, and plotting out where the paths will be. All of that information will be given to engineers. Of course, to, Jeff, to, to, mm -hmm. your, yeah, to your yeah. concern, um, I can't tell you what that cost would be. It'll be the village's engineers because. At this point, this is a, a village effort, and they're taking the lead on it. Um, there is um, grants being written. It's being written by the village's um, employee, uh, Dave Gilmore, who's their planner. Um, but that's a, a, their in-house cost, as I understand it. I don't understand that that's something they're coming back to ask the town to contribute towards. Will there be some other expenses? Yeah, there will be, and I can't really delineate them yet. We'll know better in the next two weeks because the grant application is due July 31st. So it's, it's, it's as just well as it's a proportionate financial responsibility for the initial stages of organization of the entirely newly constituted preserve property. So the initial stages of organization, and so I'll ask Kevin in a contract, what is the initial stages of organization? What is the definition? Like, how do we define what is an initial stage and what is not an initial? But when does the initial stage end? What is the anniversary of that? Well, it depends on what's included in the organizational scheme. So, you're talking about the initial stages of organization. So, does that this speak to it? Uh, I apologize. Does that speak to it then? So, does that work whereas? So well, the organizational stage might involve all those things for planning purposes, mm -hmm. and you aware as there. Mm -hmm. But I think once you come together with an organizational concept, I think that's where it ends. Now let me just also see if I'm clear, correct in the sense that, in essence, this is sort of a sort of a outline in a sense because. 
technically we have to um, incorporate, we have to create an IMA. Um, we authorize the mayor to execute a memorandum of sale or an IAA with the town we, with respect to, but the IMA has not been created. So this is not an IMA. It's, it's, uh, we're entering into a memorandum of understanding, but we actually have to create the IMA. And I'm even on board to go e even exceeding the proportional amount. And I, I like doing this when Chris is sitting over there and volunteer his time. I totally agree that I think the town and the village should be the one setting this up. And I will use the example of the rail trail too. The village right. and the town originally went out and built the rail trail and did a lot of the paid for the improvements. And, and that is an example. We'll come up to a point again too where they need a pretty substantial amount of money again to do repairs and improvements again. But I have no problem paying for repair, you know, getting this to where we need it to be, to become a preserve. But then once it is up and running, I would like to see, and I didn't know there was a friend in Millbrook, again, please let me know when they have their 501c3 status, and I'll be more than happy to. We probably won't look for that, but, but we'll whatever, get to whatever the status is, yes, contribute. where they can accept contributions, but I, I just want to make sure that that is the plan going forward, that we're not entering into an agreement here to say. Yeah, no, we're not. And, and I'm not even saying that poor, I, I have, I actually honestly don't have a problem with going exceeding a proportional amount, because I think Chris may have some equipment that to be used there, and we it, parts of it may be closer to us, and maybe his crew, the Blues crew, getting together and doing work. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. Again, you're welcome, Chris. Mm -hmm. I love you. There you go. <laughs> but I, I think there are lots of opportunities for us to develop it, and I understand that. I've been all over that land, and I, I want to see it develop. And it's going to take some serious funding, but I would like to know that there is a group that will be driving mm -hmm. post that will. Yep. The, so the village happy. will have responsibility for management. Yep. They'll use their forces, or they'll sub it out, whatever they choose to. But the friends group will be there, and the friends group will invest a lot of time and energy on an ongoing basis. I mean, I, I eventually do. I, I mean, I see this could be potentially a connector with our rail trail. And this could be a connector to our Morello Park. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of opportunities here for everybody. Absolutely, so. and, and those okay. those connections have been discussed. They are not within the scope of what the consolidated funding application will reflect. Okay. As a matter of fact, when I was at the last CWASP meeting, when we talked about moving forward on this and stuff, <coughs> there were some things that they wanted to do with the Friends Group and stuff, and in terms of the Friends Group being a part of the IMA, and this is and that, and I sort of said, you're getting ahead of yourself. You know, we first have to agree that the town and the village are going to move forward, you know, A, for the village to purchase it, B, for us to move forward to do, it out, you know, do a grant application, you know, um, you know, the Friends Group comes later, and you know, because they were already they'd like you know be a partner with us on this uh, on this uh, you know this IMA. It was like, oh, guys, you're getting a little too ahead of yourself. Well, <laughs> but they are up and running. Uh, if it's uh, 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 ready, uh, I'd like to wait. Let's come out. In all fairness, I'd like think, to have. I don't uh, think there's been a, a motion. I'd like Marty no, to have the honor. There was a motion. Was a motion. Was a, that was the believe it or not. That was the like second. That was an hour ago. That was the second. No, motion allowed Marty to. No, we did. We didn't actually. No, we never made the motion. There was a motion. Yeah, that was a second discussion. No, we made, that we made, that's made that's the motion. That's uh, Marty made it. No, Kevin made the motion. Yeah, I won't say Marty did. I thought I remember Marty making it. <laughs> I thought I remember Marty making it. It was so long ago. Yeah, yeah. I have Kevin. amnesia. The yeah. only thing that matters is that we can't Marty made it. That was it. There we go. The no, but, no, but actually, no, no, truthfully. Kevin, can you withdraw your motion? Let Marty's first motion on the town yes. board be this? Yes. Okay, Marty, would you like to motion? I would like to move that the town board pass resolution number to be determined. <laughs> yeah. It's not it's bad, not we're, we we're in single resolution. digits, actually. Yeah, we, we, don't, don't. We, don't, we don't, this is not a local law. Like we only have one local law. Like we're moving the resolution. We, to this is what you're doing. I would like Kevin to second that, uh, just, absolutely. Just you doing this. Resolution of the town <laughs> board of the town of New Falls authorizing the town supervisor to enter into a memorandum of understanding or an intermunicipal agreement with the village of New Falls regarding the design, maintenance, and operation of the Millbrook Region. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Motions are carried. Thank you. Very okay. Much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, we have the bus record, the pavilion <laughs> dedication, escrow, award of DEP, and the creation of um, two civil service positions. So, um, what, what, what's. Oh, yes, uh, uh, what did you say, escrow? Yes, I have escrow right here. So, 
Um, what was the, what didn't you do last time with the bus drivers that we have to do? You no, know, we, we did it. We just, we got, it's, four names got added. Okay, so they added some bus drivers. We just okay, so yeah. Like so what's that? I'd like to make a motion uh, that we add to the list for bus drivers for the youth program uh, four names. Second. All in favor? Aye. You don't want to say the name, so you just give those it to us. Four names. I didn't address the name. Four names. Do you have the list? Yes. I do. There you okay. go. Okay. Okay. So we did. Did we vote? We, we we all in favor? Okay, yeah. motion so carried. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, Jeff, you want to do the escrow? The escrow, uh, I'd like to make, I'd like to make a resolution that for the applicant Thomas Waning project, who is before the planning board, that we establish an escrow amount of $2,500, for which when it is depleted, half of its initial amount, or $1,250, that a deposit is made. Second. All in Any favor? discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motions are carried. One abstain. Oh. Do I have to come You don't have to. We're just setting up a dance escrow account so when it goes through the planning process. Just to pay for everything. There's money yes, to pay okay. for the. Uh, I haven't seen the budget, so I'm not comfortable speaking. Oh, I apologize. Efficiency. Uh, Oh, I apologize. What it is is uh, applicants before uh, we hadn't done this years ago. We were doing it correct. We never did it, uh, and it is a flaw. We correct it any time someone does a project uh, in front of the planning board. You need to leave an escrow amount. And so we just simply what we do is I spoke to Dave Clouser, I speak to Kelly, and then I speak to George Lithgow or whoever the engineer is, and they tell me so. Each one of them feel that they will be somewhere around. A thousand to twelve hundred dollars. So we set it, and then when it gets to half, uh, since we've gone to this process, the town has not been out any money. Unfortunately, Susan inherited a deficit twice. <laughs> when I first came in, with, when I first got elected, um, the Walmart project had been, you know, the Walmart project was denied, and all of a sudden there was fifty thousand dollars in course for the for the engineers and the lawyers and the whatever. That Walmart had left, you know, they didn't stay on top of the escrow account. They owed 50 grand. When they ended up losing, when they ended up being denied, what did they do? They sued us, okay? They sued us. The whole purpose of suing us is they knew that they were going to um, lose and that we had a really good case, you know, an airtight, you know, <coughs> decision. But they were suing us because they wanted to force us to have to negotiate. And I remember we ended up hiring George Rodenhausen. We were sitting in a meeting. Marion Dubois was there and whatever. And we were being advised that the money it was going to cost us to have to litigate would be more than the fifty thousand dollars, and I remember like Marion was like really upset because who wanted to, you know, you know, negotiate with Walmart, right? And I remember saying to Marion at the time I was brand new, and I said, Marion, I said, though, from a fiscal perspective, I gave up my life to run for supervisor to stop loopholes, okay? And I said, you think this is what I want to do? But as the fiscal person, I can't justify spending hundred thousand dollars to try to save fifty thousand, okay? So that happened then when we came back in this time, okay, we found out that there was so many projects that had not stayed up with their escrow account and we got on top of it and Kelly went and did this major you know, um, evaluation and started chasing a lot of these companies and said, you've got to, you know, you've got to like give us, and there was some money we had to write off. So this board put a process in place that we would establish an escrow account when it got, you know, like say, for like well, very large, we might have started at twenty-five thousand. Okay, when it gets down to twelve thousand five hundred, until they replenish it back up, we will not. You know, you know, basically the project is on hold. We're not going because we end up getting the bills after the fact. So what ends up happening is the money's not in there. But I have Dave Clauser's bill and George Lithgow's bills and this and whatever. We're not going to like not pay them. Sure. So actually, as a matter of fact, there was a. Um, I think it was Wild Berry Lodge, right? Yeah. Wild Berry Lodge was in front of us. We found that their escrow account was getting low. We literally called them up because they were like desperate to keep moving it. We called them up and said, if you don't get a check here tomorrow, you can't come in front of the planning board. They were there the next day with the, the check. Morning, morning, and so, the short version. Um, <laughs> right. The short version. The long version. Uh, not right now, but I would love to so hear. Jeff, so, basically uh, what happens, so basically what happens, is, so basically what happens now is every time a project's coming in front of it, Kelly gets in touch, touch with Jeff. Jeff then talks to all of the you know the, all the sure. people and then Make together they and together they come up with the judgment of what they think the escrow account should be and then Jeff comes and asks us to do it. And we've never been out money since, so we're much so, happier. Congratulations. Right. Okay, so do you feel comfortable voting oh, out? Yes. Uh, well, all in yes. favor? Aye. Aye. Motions Aye. are carried. Aye. <laughs> okay. Jeff, do you well, want to do a quick update on the DEP? Uh, the DEP is uh, it's actually 
somewhat quick, and I apologize, Kevin. Uh, there are some, uh, there's a lot going on, which is good, as far as the DP and the water project. Uh, what we're doing, uh, as we all know, both boards have voted, signed, and approved legal contracts and agreements uh, between each other in the form of an intermunicipal agreement. And then we also have an intergovernmental agreement. Uh, what has happened, though, is uh, some, uh, I need the board to, I, I'm asking the board for a couple of things. One of them is uh, I need to meet with uh, legal tomorrow. Uh, there were some uh, disturbing things said the other night in the village, uh, which uh, could have legal ramifications. Uh, we've all signed agreements as far as uh, the town and the village stating that we are all agree in the design plan and where it is. Uh, the design plan is using two water sources uh, in the town uh, and then also uh, improving uh, the reservoirs. reservoirs and also improving the process of how uh, water is used in the community. So also doing like the conservation. Uh, there was a discussion at the village board meeting of uh, continuing to pursue a water source for which the DEP will not pay for. They made that very clear. Uh, the Department of Health and the DEC has made it clear uh, that there is a permitting process that that is not allowed within the time frame or if it ever would be allowed within the time frame. And there is, was discussion of asking the engineer, uh, going out to ask an engineer uh, to continue to look at the uh, river as a water source. Uh, so this is completely contrary to everything we have set up with the DEC and work, excuse mm -hmm. me, the DEP and worked so hard for. Uh, we became involved because the village wasn't doing anything. Uh, Susan became involved and we are where we are now because we have been able to, at times, even twist the arm of the DEP uh, to including, uh, you know, getting an $8 million water system completely paid for by them the water district possibly, uh, getting them to pay for all the improvements, in, getting them to pay for land, getting them to pay for development, uh, getting them to pay all the legal costs, all the design and engineering costs. Uh, so I had a couple phone calls I made today to our uh, attorney and it's, uh, we're at a point now where uh, people are not comfortable. So I need to speak to our attorney uh, tomorrow in a little bit more length. and. Uh, possibly have a meeting with uh, the village's attorney to discuss the, the direction that they're going to go in. If they are going to continue to look at another process, it, it legally puts us at uh, a... It depends, uh, that It definitely does depend, but it's, there's some concern that this could be putting at risk uh, both the contracts we have signed, both as the agreement with the village, uh, the contract we have signed with the New York City, uh, DEP and you know we are, you know, need to begin design and permitting process and part of the design and permitting process is that we all voted to accept what we found in the study and this is contrary to what was found in the study. Why don't we, why don't we, why don't we talk about this? Yes. Um, I know that we have a committee that we have an understanding. Yes. And so as a board I'm thinking that really the village is free to explore other alternatives that they want going forward. I think we just need to know from them, it's like reassurance that they can go ahead and do whatever they want, just yeah. that's within their Right, that's within their, that's within their purview. Yeah, absolutely. If they want a yes. backup plan to do whatever, yeah. that's perfectly within absolutely. their purview. Oh, yeah. You're just looking for a little cold comfort from them that that the, the backup yeah. stuff kind of interfere with the primary. So, so because the, the river, I mean, absolutely, the river, in 30 years down the road, the river might be a backup plan. It very well could be. I, I honestly don't know that. But, uh, you know, there is, in the phase one of the study, there is a lot of extensive research that was done into looking at the river. I just want to make sure to your exact point that we all understand that the, we're still the, that the, the primary and that, and that the village understand this is the path we're going down. Because uh, if you're not, then it, it, changes, it changes the environment we're working in. One, one quick thing, Jeff, and, and I didn't attend the meeting, but I, I did speak to the mayor about it, and so correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding was the conversation about the wall kill 
came from an individual trustee and was not a conversation that was necessarily supported by the board as a whole. Is that correct? That is correct, except okay. for the board did agree to bring in the engineers okay. to discuss getting pricing on running a pipe up the mountain. Okay. So that's that, that, that second piece of that would lead me to believe that they're interested in pursuing that. So had it just been a single board member discussing it, then that is one thing, and he was the, yeah. the, the lone uh, voice of uh, speaking with, with a, a very limited knowledge base, base, which was demonstrated frequently throughout the discussion, that they now are going to bring in an engineer to get a price of what would it cost for an engineering study to so bring water up the mountain. And, and maybe our attorney has a better option. If, if there is some you know, different feelings now coming from the DEP as a result of this, could we ask, since it is a new seated board, to essentially pass like a non-binding resolution that just says, you know, we still support the project or something along those lines? Well, I haven't so discussed this with the, I haven't discussed this with the DEP yet, and I don't okay. want to discuss this with the DEP yet. I okay. think this well, is well, better well, discussed well, between well, the boards. Well, I, I don't yeah. want to say that the DEP, I think something is, has gone. Uh, to Kevin's point, though, because this is a, I, I just want to make sure that the village understands that we have a, we both made very serious commitments and that these commitments are still heading in the same direction. Should they want to choose to go make another direction, then we need to know that it won't interfere with the It direction. won't interfere with the direction that we are going in. Okay, but let me just say In other words, so it, it is the responsibility, that it is the responsibility of this board to continue to support the, you know, the best mitigation possible for where we do get the sources. So there are mitigation plans in place that you, know, you have worked very hard at, I have worked very hard at, at you know, assisting the residents to make sure that all the mitigation is in place, paid for 100%, there is no cost to them, and the boards are all supporting this. An indication that a board is not supporting it is that they do want to bring in an engineer to discuss the possible possibility of using a plan which has been completely taken off of the books. They may just be exploring an option, and that may be all it is. So yeah. maybe if we can just uh, have some communication with Tim yeah. and just express the concern that you have about that, maybe just the phone call. Okay. Yeah, but that's, that's actually what I wanted to say. Unless there is some other dialogue, and maybe there was about it, I think I'd like to take that route first, and then if there is a problem, to continue to challenge. Absolutely. But it may just be a simple. Well, I guess, I mean, I guess what I just want to sort of, the village and the town both entered into an IMA that, you know, agreed to how we were going to proceed, and then we both did individual IGAs with the DEP. So we're legally obligated as two communities to proceed down a path that we all unanimously agreed to for both boards. Mm -hmm. And so regardless of what they might be looking to do independently, they're still bound by the contract to go down the road, the route, the road that we're going down. I just want to make sure that's understood by all. <laughs> that's, I'm, sure. I am just looking for that pure understanding uh, huh. because that you know that has not been the conversation a board member has been having with residents in the conversation. So you so know, I what, think you're, yeah. So I think part of your concern yeah. is the fact right. that, that, that I think if I understand, I'm reading between the lines, you also have a little bit of concern that maybe there's been attempts that are being made to undermine the process moving forward to ensure that the process fails? You don't have to answer that. Does that require an answer? Absolutely. I don't know if I can answer that question. I'm okay, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I can answer that okay, question. Sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I don't know if I can answer that. Yeah, so okay. an ideal answer might be that we're doing this because we want to see what a backup scenario might be should some element of the IMA or the IGA is oh, wow. not be fulfilled. Absolutely, yes. That so I, I, I agree that's why they're doing it. Right, I, I just want, well, the, yes. yeah. you just need confirmation. Right, yes. I just need confirmation okay. that, that this okay. is the, we are okay. following what was, okay. we've all voted on to approve. Yeah. And, and it just yeah. as a quick aside, too, I mean, there is a lot of work now that has to start getting done because there's got to be a lot of conversations with the landowners and with, you know, I mean, so once well, the we... the design and permitting process we've been working on... Well, that's and, what I'm saying. There's in, a lot of work place. that's like now, yeah. like that's happening and that's, you know, yeah. you know whatever. Well, I would suggest calling the mayor. I did yeah. speak with him about it. I think it's good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So, um, that's the DP. Okay. So the only thing we have left is 
um, the dedication, we want to dedicate the pavilion, and we had talked about dedicating the pavilion in the name of two people, one from the Brunehof and our yeah. um, the young boy who you know, passed away in New Paltz. So we asked Chris to um, do a little bit of research. Chris got back to us with a idea, and so Chris, do you want to just share the idea? Because I think I might have been the only one who got the email. Nice and easy. Did yeah. you send it to everybody? Yeah, it okay, but Marty didn't get it because Marty, yeah, so why don't you just say, uh, we know about the pavilion and what we want to do and how we're going to dedicate it. And, uh, yep. So go ahead, so quick. Probably easier to show. One idea is going to be the wrong spot. Different sizes, all this, and place it on a rock that's at the pavilion. Yeah. I can cut out a piece of the rock and um, insert it in there. Uh -huh. And I think there's a strong little bottom there. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably the size of this building that yeah. we couldn't find the edge. <laughs> we dug for two days and couldn't do it. Uh -huh. I like it. So that, that was my idea. I was planning like, like on the because there's that. two people um, dedicating it to or um, exactly two names that were dedicated. Yeah, there's two names designating the pavilion and the picnic area. Uh -huh. you know, to, then you know, put the two names in, and then uh, you know, I kind of got pushy at the end. You know, you want to, uh, you know memory of um, uh, what I said now. Well, I mean, but technically, I think we're going to call it, you know, the Kyle Brewer. Brewer, Bob Brewer uh, Memorial Pavilion, and then we're going to do some other dedication for the person from Brewer. Well, what Chris had put in was kind of interesting, and, and uh, this pavilion and picnic, I won't make fun of this one. You did this from your cell phone, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> the, this pavilion and picnic area are dedicated to the memories of and names. May their memories, may their memory live on in the beauty of this land. I am not married to this last party, but I, I like your caveat there. But I think what Chris is trying to say, which I, I, I like the idea of it very much, is that both the pavilion and the parkland are all mm -hmm. you know, that surround it are dedicated in the memory of these two people. I thought because the Buddha all helped us so much with yeah. the pavilion, I didn't want to alienate them. Mm -hmm. Also, the, you know, the, uh, the, the young man who passed away, it, it kind of makes them, that whole area all the things. So can you just read again what Chris... Uh, uh, again, he, he's uh, more than open to it. Uh, this pavilion and picnic area are dedicated to the memories of... Kyle Brewer. Right? May their memory live on in the beauty of this land. And that's really beautiful. Do you guys hear it? Do you want to hear it again? Or? I like it. I will do the spell check on it. Okay, are you guys... Yeah, you're welcome. Are, are you guys happy with that? Uh, uh, yeah. Do we need it as a formal motion or... Well, we will, but because we have to spend the money. But yeah. let's just see. Okay. Kevin's reading it for a second. Yeah, I'm sure I can get a better price than the flag. It's just some what was cars. the price? Um, I I measured out the rock where I could fit a flag. It's a 12 by 12. Okay. The biggest. You know, it doesn't have to be the biggest. No, we'll do the big one. In this book, it's got a 12 by 10 for 480 dollars. And we could probably go over to you know Weeden Weeden I'm Memorial. I'm sure I can get it local. I'm know, sure Weeden or someone or they could help us. I know that the NCU would get one. So what was the quote, the $6,000 that I saw in your email? No, five to 600 dollars. It's five to 600 Oh, oh, I just read an extra number, I'm sorry. <laughs> I like your number better than my number. <laughs> this will be nice, this will look like the, uh, the, the, really the John Yeah, no, it's 12 by 12 is, is the biggest I could fit. I would like it to be. The John G. Bet. That's the flat I think that's bigger than the John G. Bet one that's down uh, by the river there. That might be a little bit. I'd like to make a motion to, uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve this. Does anyone have a, does anyone have someone that they would like to write this or do we want to have one of our committees uh, or uh, boards write this for us or the actual verbiage or? The actual verbiage we should actually be prepared as a draft to share it with family members. And a group of maybe? Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and maybe and what we'll do is did we reach out to the there? Yeah. Well, actually, uh, actually, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, we reached we reached out yeah. to Kyle's family. And I don't know if the Brutal Hoff knows we're doing this, but what happened was I was up at the Brutal Hoff when they have that community lunch thing, yeah. and um, I had mentioned to them that we wanted to dedicate this um, um, pavilion to Kyle, who, you know, and he had just passed away, and they did a memorial for him that day and stuff. And I said, but I have to double check, but it's okay with the family and everything. And then the Brutal Hoff said, well, if you can't, you know, the Brutal Hoff basically said, well, you could dedicate it for this woman from the Brutal Hoff who had just passed away. So they had commented that you know we could dedicate it to her, and then I came back to talk to Chris, and Chris and Carol reminded me of how well Carol and Chris reminded me of how much work the Brutal had done to help us get this pavilion done, and so that's when I sort of realized that maybe it would be right to do both. So I don't think I ever got back to the Brutal to tell them we're doing this. But it was their suggestion. Okay, great. Right. So, so I don't think it's a problem. So and I'd like to make I'd like to make a motion cool. that the uh, town uh, that the town uh, does make up to one thousand dollars for the cost. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion so carried. And then we'll just. Uh, when are we doing? Chris, when are we? Uh, we're going to hopefully try to. How long do you think it'll be till we uh, can get this like done? So we're going to try to do a barbecue. We're going to do a barbecue. We're going to do a barbecue at the. Uh, a barbecue. We're going to do a barbecue. We, I mean, someone of course is going to fix my stuff. Yeah, and we'll and check our panels. Or decide panel. what they want, you know, exactly. I mean, someone can send that to me, and I can decide. Or we can say this will take something like, uh, respect a couple of weeks. Okay. Do you know, um, Jim? I, 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 I don't want to take a PDQ for them too. I can find out. It was okay. based on the fact that different pieces part, uh -huh. um, but I can. So as soon as we know that we're going to have it, we'll, we'll, we'll try to find yeah, the barbecue. Yeah. Okay, so hopefully it'll... Oh, we, what we want to try to do is, um, after we, we want to do a dedication, once we have it, we want to do a dedication, but we want to through, throw a community a barbecue where everybody gets invited and we, you know, sort of honor. Yeah, yeah, okay, so, okay, good. So maybe we'll do it while we're still here. Okay, okay, so guys, the only two things left besides a budget transfer, um, what? Um, um, we have two things plus a budget transfer. Marty just wanted us to um, add us accepting his resignation. Can Marty move his own resignation? I will move um, accepting Marty's resignation from Clean Water Open Stays Protection Commission. I would say usually when we do this, we take that we do it with um, great regret, but we're not regretting it because Marty's going to get appointed to be the uh, liaison for the Clean Water Open Space, and he'll keep going to the meetings instead of me. And I will not to hold them. So, um, so anyway, I move Marty's uh, resignation. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh -huh. Motions are carried. Uh, did you reassign him to the liaison? Well, I'm going to have to redo it. I'll have to oh. do some uh, stuff. Can we now appoint the Dennis chair? Burr? Dennis do is we, presently do, the do, vice I chair. I think, I believe, he just up. I believe you, uh, the planning board, and I believe ZBA, I know the planning board will reappoint the chair. I don't know ZBA, I apologize, I'm drawing a blank. We do I, know believe you guys, chair, I believe ZBA. you appoint your own chairs. Well, anyway, Dennis Moore is the vice chair, so he'll yep. just step up. So, so I believe when you appoint your own okay. chairs, so yep. they, okay. they, they take care so of That's what we have done. Though. Okay, yeah. Yeah. okay, good. Okay, so um, we have to, we, in the budget, we actually put in a position for the um, um, budget department. We actually put in for a person, and um, so Arlene wanted to hire somebody, and she called civil service, but we actually don't have We have to create the account clerk civil service position in order for us to fill the account clerk civil service position. So we have positions filled and everybody's filling those positions, so we have to add a new position. So um, we have it in the budget, it's just creating the position so civil service can send us the list and we can hire. So I would like to make a motion to uh, create an account clerk civil service position in the budget, budget office. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motions are carried. And then the same thing, we um, authorized doing a finance director. We haven't filled the position yet because I was working with civil service to create the position. 
uh, you know, we are getting to a point now that we just can't wait anymore because the New York Rising money is starting to come through. The um, D, you know, we're going to have to deal with the DEP. The microgrid is getting started, although the other group will handle it. But then Jeff and I also yesterday were in a meeting. 1064, about, 1065, about, tax regulations. About Obamacare and about the reporting that we have to do in regards to Obamacare. Which is here to stay. Well, it's here to stay, okay. but, but the thing is, actually, it was a subsidy. It was a subsidy that the people who um, are in the federal exchanges get. New York State created its own exchange. Yes. So actually, it wouldn't have affected us, even if it went down today. It wouldn't affect us. What I would like to understand, though, is why all these other states have a federal exchange and they get supplemented through federal dollars. Are we getting money that they're using to as a state exchange or are we just not getting money and other states are getting money? I'd like to understand that. Um, I do believe we could contact us on our panel for that. Just, you can do that if you I want. Do it. So, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, do you want to just repeat that one more time? Okay, but I'm sure. I'll, 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 I'll shoot you an email. Okay, okay. So anyway, but yes, it did, it did get approved today, anything. So there's a ton of reporting. Jeff and I met yesterday. Arlene brought somebody down to meet with us. And the amount of reporting and work that's got to be done that we have to comply with that um, has to be in is a lot of work. So and, now, and, and the bookkeeping staff is overloaded. We really need to get this finance director in. Long and short of it all, we created our own position. We defined a position. When we sent it up to um, the county, they basically, in essence, said what they would really prefer us to do is use a position that the county already has through civil service. One position is a controller, which is a competitive position where you have to take a test and then you have civil service protection. The other one is a budget officer, which is non-competitive. And so a new supervisor comes in, they can get rid of the finance director, you know, the budget officer, and bring somebody else in. When we created this position, one of our goals was to take it out of politics so the town was always protected from a financial perspective that no matter who's the supervisor, whether they have experience financially or not, you know, whether, you know, whatever happens, that the town will be okay. Nobody should go through We've just gone through these past four years. That's for sure. So they have a position of controller, um, which is the, 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 the competitive one, and then the position of budget officer. And they would prefer for us to do one of these two positions, for us to create, you know, to approve one of these positions, then they would actually create it. It only takes a couple of days to create it, and then we would have the ability to then go ahead and hire somebody if we're ready to hire somebody. Uh, so we could do the finance director, but then that has to go up to the state. They have to approve it. It's a whole process, and we honestly don't have the time at this point to not move forward with this. We've got to get somebody in because the budget's coming up, and we are going to start having a lot of paperwork with New York Rising. Um, we're already having a meeting next week with Lori DeBoard. Rosanna's meeting with her to stay on top of like the reporting and the paperwork, and it's going to be a nightmare and stuff. So what I'd like to do is, here is um, the controller, how it's defined. Quite frankly, our position that we created was much, had a much higher bar and um, much higher classifications. We were a little concerned about what the control we fought through the state that you want to get the source out of. But we thought through the state that there were certain things like the police commission. When you um, create a police commission, the town board gives up all its responsibility technically to the um, police commission except for a few things. We thought the same thing with the controller, but after talking to the um, county personnel, no, we're not giving up any authority as a board. And you, would actually, you would actually have to name the controller each year the budget officer. Is that a, that's part of your reward meeting each mm -hmm. year to, should you choose to do it. Uh -huh. Or somebody else would choose to do it. <laughs> I don't think I'll be here January 1st. Now, technically, <coughs> what I was told, just so you do know, the, um, there was a controller in Warsing. There is no one right now. So there is nobody in the county that has a controller position. So they did say that if we wanted to actually tweak this, that we could actually tweak this, you know, to reflect things that we might want or things we might want to take out. And it wouldn't be a problem because there's nobody in the position right now. And so we could tweak it if we wanted to. I don't know if we have to. I think, I mean, we pretty much know what we need somebody to be doing. But does it have anything in here about the, um, the only thing we might want to add is the union stuff that we had in our, um, we had um, 
do you have the um, things yet from when we did the finance directive? Because we had some stuff about the union contracts, about you know making sure that making sure that they kept um, track of the sick time and the vacation time and the. Do we? Do we maybe not want to turn our no, I mean, I'd like for the civil service to try to get this started and create the position so then we can try to, you know, because we're, we're starting the budget right now yeah. and the New York Rising stuff is about starting, so I think it's really important for somebody to be here from the very beginning. Um, there, there, there's a job description that we wrote for our We wrote a job description director. for our finance director. And we and set a very, oh, and we set a really high bar. It should be on the town website. That's what I'm looking yeah. for right now. And as a matter of fact, it was on the town website, but we created a really high bar and actually civil service told me that actually it's really supposed to be minimum qualifications and they thought that the qualifications that we established were over the bar that the county establishes for anything. So, so <laughs> we, pretty, we did a pretty high Yeah, end. the one we had here, so we had... Uh, so, do you want to read what we wrote? Duties, responsibilities shall include overseeing bookkeeping and payroll personnel, health insurance, retirement system, employee assistance program, contract monitoring, and reports, audit, and certification for payment of all lawful claims or charges, audit financial records and accounts of all units of government, multiple year fiscal planning projections, ensure the integrity of the fiscal well-being of the town of New Falls, other duties and responsibilities deemed appropriate in this job title. Did we, did we have minimum qualifications? Yeah, we had maximum. <laughs> that maximum, that was the, that's, <laughs> uh, we, had, we actually, you know, the only minimum qualifications we set were uh, New Paltz residency, uh, university degree in field or related finance field, 10 plus years experience in finance and accounting, five plus years of municipal experience, five plus years experience in union health care negotiations, job history including significant portion of experience items as I mentioned which is quite higher bar than what's in here is minimum, like minimum qualifications. But is, are we going to look to this person to advise us on how to deal with, for example, investments? Yes. Yes and no, actually. Because uh, part of that actually is using the investment counselor uh, or, oh, for example, counsel. when we go to bond, we use bond counsel. That's most of one of the big things we don't do for real well here, though, uh, Marty, that's a good question, is uh, when you go to the state meetings, they really do suggest you do a lot more forecasting. And so that is one thing we did want this person to do too, is have municipal experience and then help us do forecasting. Uh, one of the things is, is uh, we're doing a much better job though in forecasting health insurance costs. And in fact, we just learned something that any future union, con no one's doing union contracts now past 2017. 2017. No one is. Because of uh, the Affordable Care happening. Act, and there's just so much open on it, you just can't, it wouldn't be responsible. Cadillac the, well, Cadillac, the Cadillac tax. The Cadillac tax is going to be interesting, and then probably will also be very short. But there's a lot of forecasting that we need, yeah. and it would it's those are the tools that we want. In fact, there's some new laws even coming out. Uh, some of the newer ones are. It's still pending, but the New York State is looking to make up make it legal for towns to make a funded pool for future benefits, which again, we should be forecasting that. So for example, we have we have actually more retired police officers than we do actual officers on duty now. So we are in a position where we really start needing forecasting where those dollars are gonna come from. So we have about 45 retirees now, I believe, uh, on health insurance. And, I tell and you that's that just, that grows each time yeah. someone retires. And I gotta tell you that this year's budget, I mean, we might be able to, when I did the budget last year, I sort of said to the board, we're sort of like really at the edge, you know, kind of stuff, we used a lot of fund balance, because Kevin got the $450,000 for us for the cell tower thing, because we just, we're bonding to get the sewer six money back that the town has, you know, you know, put out for 20 years kind of stuff. It's gonna help us with, you know, augmenting back the fund balance, but this year, last year when we did the, um, when we did the budget, T under the tax cap, we were able to go up $240,000. That's the only spread we had to stay under mm -hmm. the cap. Our increase in our police pension was $260,000, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. This year, the cap is basically going to be, I don't think we can go up anything. It's mm -hmm. going to be zero. We can't go up anything. That's pretty much what's being forecasted. So now you're starting with the fact that you can't even, you can't even increase. There's not even like $240,000 cushion. 
you know, and you can't increase anything, well, we know health care is going to go up. We know our retirement is going to go up. We know that, you know, we have union contracts that, and, 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 you know, and so God knows when we start trying to do this budget this year. You know, Well, I support the approach, yeah. Kevin, of bringing somebody on with that expertise. It's just a matter of But when I read this and, and listen to what you said, if I followed it, the controller position in civil service, if you're not happy, you got a problem trying to remove somebody, I would assume um, that the minimum qualifications for the things that I'm hearing described, uh, it's hard for me to get my arms around somebody who is um, 22 years old um, who has only a high school diploma and asking them to do these things. And, and it seems that that's what would be allowed here. Well, the good news is, is that we got five, six, six hundred we have in the interview. How many you got one? Two, one, two, two, three. And we got, three. we got one with very robust municipal experience, one with school, which is very similar, school district experience, uh, one that is, she's a controller or something. Like she's the shift for, for affordable housing. For affor she does affordable housing. She understands the process. In Newburgh. Yeah. But again, uh, you know, and, but, and again, they each had pluses and minuses. Uh, again, one of them had experience in actually managing people to manage. Are they all on the register for this No, actually, position? actually, there's no, there's actually no. Uh, there's no one on the list. There's no one on the list. There's the list, list is no, no one on the list. There's no one on the list. So what we can do is we can hire the Somebody individual, and then what they would do is they would then take. They'd be yeah. provisional until they create the test. So, so this was a little bit about. They would the probably have to pay until so they leave. Yes. Yeah, you have absolutely. perhaps or you do or you don't have a You are register. absolutely correct. Yeah. So I mean, if you know, again, yeah, we created, I have the same fear, by the way, Marty. We created a pretty we created a pretty high bar when we did our you know our finance director when we created the position, and it was a pretty high bar. But that's because we want. I mean, from my perspective, you know, our need is somebody who's really highly qualified as a finance person to manage. You know, you know. Well, well, just not to, to manage, but then also to advise. So, like, actually, it's interesting, too, because I don't know. I'm just trying to think that there's so many things going on. Arlene was saying, our bookkeeper, I don't remember who she was talking to, and they said, well, do you have a financial advisor? And she said, no. That was a uh, bond council. It was a bond council. It was, oh, Lauren was, Lauren was saying. Lauren we were was both saying, talking uh, about And they said, also. right, and they said, uh, do you have a financial advisor? And she said, this is a question for a financial advisor. And it was like, no, we don't have a financial advisor. You know, kind of stuff. And we've been kind of fortunate, too. We've been using our banks, and they have financial mm -hmm. advisors. We've been using our bank financial advisors, which have helped us out tremendously. I don't want so, to come in late and try to change any direction, but you is are there not a sense all. that this position of controller is one that would meet our requirements if it were with somebody who meets only the minimum qualifications? It's the same fear I have with the county position too, is once they're there. Yeah. Now anyone else that you hire though too, it's, it's, it's gonna be difficult to hire someone into this that works at the pleasure of the board. You can't have somebody come you know, in. And it's, well, they would still have, they, they would mm -hmm. still have, you know, they, they would still have to have experience because one of the problems we did have with, with previous administration was also they hired people that they liked that were maybe not. And again, you can then also end up with that same yeah. They brought yeah. in they brought in some people of questionable talent, mm -hmm. and that did not assist this community whatsoever. In fact, mm -hmm. it hurt us tremendously. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why when we decided to create this position, which honestly I have to tell you, from literally the day I got in this 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 round and stuff, this you know, again I have a unique experience from the perspective that I was supervisor from ninety six to two thousand, mm -hmm. came in after Dave led, you know, and spent four years and then came back again. So the difference between the first time and the difference between this time, I was like just, I mean, I just could not believe what we had to deal with. And, 
you know, we're still somewhat dealing with it, and part of it has to do with this admin system that they transferred to, and it was never set up right, so there's still problems and whatever. And so it was like, we really should have done this four years ago. There was no ifs and buts in my mind that we should have done this four years ago, and I will not leave this position without doing it, because I don't want to see the next person ever have to deal with what we just dealt with. You know, so it's really important that we put a lot of time into this, and that's why we developed our finance director. And um, I mean, we could still go back and say we want the state, we want civil service to send this to the state, and um, you know, have the state send it. It's just the problem is the position won't get created for a while, and we're starting to take on a whole bunch of, you know, you know, a whole bunch of. Well, you know what? I, I you know, I did try to find out from the state um, what, you know, what it would take. I think they just really wanted us to do this. But if we sort of feel really strongly that we want to say that what we did, the finance director. So really the question is, do we want to raise the bar? So, I mean, I guess, well, I, you know, I sort of, you know, what we can do, I mean, I wanted to try to do this tonight so we can get this going, but it's too important, and we are going to be meeting on the 9th. And um, um, what was I going to say, and we could also have a special meeting I mean, I can find out from them how much we can play with this, like in the sense that, can we change the minimum for qualifications? Can we bump them up? You know, for the service. Yeah, but she already, she had said to me that because we're gonna be the only town with this position right now, because th this is position has been created. Okay, so it's created. Um, there was a controller in Warsaw, but they're not there. So there's no town in Los County that has a controller. So they said to me, if we wanted to tweak this, now's the time to do it because we can tweak it, we're setting the bar. Including the, the Well, I never talked to them about the qualifications because I, you know, when I said to them, send it to me and let me see where we go, it wasn't until I got it recently that I was looking for minimal qualifications and I was mm -hmm. like, you gotta be kidding me, that's not what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this is not. Everything's fine on page one. Everything's, I think so too, I think everything's fine on page one. The only thing that might be missing is some of the things like, like the long-term forecasting, and you know maybe some of the you know union stuff and the health insurance that we wanted. It's really but the minimum qualifications. The minimum qualifications are really what's our budget? Our budget? It's like over ten for, for this person. Oh, seventy thousand with um, seventy thousand with benefits. So seventy thousand plus the cost of benefits. Yes, which for a family plan would be about twenty thousand. And and retirement. Yeah. You know, yeah. But yeah, I just said the qualifications are pretty, uh... We could literally hire someone in high school. Yeah. Well, with four years of well, experience. Yes, but... Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's kind of amazing. It's really amazing that you go from page one and a half yeah. to the second part where it looks like a huge disconnect. Yes. And actually, oh, and it, you even says here college-level study could be a replacement for the work experience. I mean, what I can do is talk to them a little bit more. You know, again, try to nuance everything. Um, you know, see where we, you know, say if we do the control, or how do we sort of bump it up? We're really concerned about the minimum qualifications. Um, and, uh, you know, can we bump it up? Maybe they would want us to bump it up to the level of what we put in 10 years' experience. You know, you know I mean, basically. But if that's what you folks, when you reviewed it, concluded was what you would like to be your threshold. To accommodate somebody else, why do we want to? Well, because again, it's a matter of with civil service in the state, and sometimes, you know what, we have to compromise. Well, well, I, I don't mind like compromising, I'm a consensus person, so, so I understand that. that. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, this, we're putting a, a, a lot of emphasis on this position and, and looking for a lot of valuable help that we need. It's just that we're also at a point that we have too many things that are about to start that we just can't keep procrastinating. And, well, I, you know, I'm not suggesting you I'm not saying, I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying that, you know, if we're, we're so sort of like... It's, it's well, it's just a matter of... Well, we don't have to know. I mean, honestly, if we're going to try to just go with our original position, then we should just go through the process of telling this, telling this of civil service, we want you to send this up to the state, we want the state to establish the position, uh, and, you know, and we just go with what our plan is. We it's just no way to the process, too? I can, I, and how long will it and take? They, they may not I do it. Well, I did, you know, I did, I did 
people, I did send an email for, um, to say how long would it take for us to go through the state process. They were just really trying to push me to, yes. you know, to do the control over the budget office because those are already established. Mm -hmm. And so, but then we just found this. Carol just found this when I asked her to go back. I couldn't print, the, print this off my, my, in my office before the meeting, and so I had sent to Carol to, you know, go back and print this. So she found this Ulster County Personal Department Fiscal Officer, which we didn't even know about. And I just, I can't understand or read this stuff in a way to, that makes any sense, because um, it says, wait a second, all Ulster County Departments, including Ulster County Community College, excluding towns, so maybe this position is not available for towns. Does that say that? Does that say that? Yes, so that's why we didn't know about this position. They never talked about it to us. So obviously this is relevant. Yeah. So rip it up. Okay. <laughs> it's just okay. okay, so if you, I mean, I really wanted to try to get this going so we can get the person in, but I think I still have to have a little bit more yeah. of a conversation. It sounds like see if it would happen if we were to propose to them, and I haven't read this to, to know that I would finish with the same conclusion, and say this, this is the position we want. Could you either revise your definition of controller to match this or expand who this can be, who, who can hire this position? But this, this is not, I mean, this, if this position, first of all, if you look at this, this doesn't explain oh, then what you they, haven't read this to say this is what we want. Well, no, for, no, when I looked at it, it doesn't, um, um, this seems to be at the time of examination because you know, candidates must be employed by Ulster County or the Ulster County Community College. I think this is something specific for the community college. I don't think, it's just that when Carol went back to make the copies, I don't know where and how she got this and where it came from. And so I just don't think this is even relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a budget officer I or it's controller. I, I Those are the two were suggesting. I, I sort of grew up, you know, whatever. So um, there's a controller, there's a budget officer. The controller is a tested position, a budget officer is, um, non-tested. A budget officer can be, you know, the next supervisor comes in, the next board comes in, they want to bring in their buddy, with, you know, because they want to give them this really, really good job and we're back to where we were and we're just paying another person to help screw up the towns. Okay? Or you can try to get a really qualified person and then, well, let me put it to you this way. Hopefully we get, get a qualified person and then they get protected. You can get a lousy person and then they're protected and then you have a hard time getting rid of them, but you know, it's a risk you have to take because, you know, again, I don't think you're going to get somebody with good qualifications who's going to come into a position like this and be beholden to what the board is and the supervisor. What is a comptroller typically paid? I know you said there isn't one at the present time. Do, uh -huh. do they have a proposed salary range that's I don't, I don't, they didn't, attached to they, this? They didn't tell me, and I don't know if the controller in the Warsaw was full-time or part-time. I thought that we looked at that when we originally made the position and felt that 70000 was comparable. You couldn't, you couldn't, oh. we did. We did do, we yeah. did a lot of research and stuff. Mm -hmm. We looked at other towns with controllers, we looked at whatever. You couldn't get anybody for less than that, but it was worth it or sold. So I can do a little bit more work and see if we can raise the qualifications. Still trying to get a better answer if we tried to go through the hours or how long it would take. I don't think anybody would give up a job that they have to come into a position that's quote, not established and not Sure. I don't know what I As a consultant, temporarily, perhaps. No, 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 nobody's, no, no, nobody's no, 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 not. I'm saying. Not full time. That's right. Somebody, be out nobody, time. nobody. You know, we have somebody. You know, we have one person working for a nonprofit, one person who works in a school district, one person who's working for an affordable housing kind of thing. They're not going to give up their they're job to come boy. here to take. They're not going to come here to take a job. Um, you know, without some kind of security. So if we could just bump up the qualification piece uh -huh. in terms of the municipal experience. Uh -huh. I don't know, the education of the public seems off too. Uh -huh. you know, I mean, it should be a four year degree. Plus. Plus, yeah. plus the she, masters. So if I say to them, well, we don't have to have the masters. I don't think we have to have the masters because you get them a four year degree. And if you have enough experience in, you know, I mean, in municipal could, and financing and whatever. I get your point, though. Yeah. Yeah. They, they but I think if we said, if they said, said but if we said we want them to have four years, you know, um, well. four years in schools, four plus, yeah. and so much, so many years experience, like working for a municipality, 
you know, and bump that up a little bit. We could just do related work experience. Like X years of related work mm -hmm. experience. I mean, I think we put 10 years as a threshold. Yeah, They're going to probably tell me about so much too much. We try to wrap this up on the night? I would like to wrap. I mean, if I can really, honestly, I would tell you if we can, if I can get this. I'd like to wrap it up. No, I want to, I'm going to, I was actually going to say to you that if I can get this all done sooner, I might even ask to have a special meeting next right. week to do this, right. just for this alone. It probably won't ever happen. Right. Don't worry, Rosanna, I'm pretty busy next week. I have yeah. a lot to do, so, you know, I'll see what I can do tomorrow. You're going to be here tomorrow. Me and, you, and actually, you know what we can do tomorrow, Jeff? Be You'll be with me. Bill Wall will be with us. We'll call up civil service. We'll talk to civil service. We'll work it all out tomorrow with them. Good. Okay? Is that a motion? No, I don't need a motion. I need a motion. I need to do the budget, and then we need a motion to close. But we have a budget modification. One budget mod. Yep. It is a budget modification for move funds allocation from equipment to contractual to pay for an emergency repair for the Justice Court door lock. And so we're moving from 8522-1110-4, Justice Court um, 695 to 8522 for the Justice for 695. So move our second. Okay, in favor? favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to thank Jeff for figuring Aye. out where and how we're going to be able to pay for this. And then, so thank you, Jeff. And speaking of that, we need the board does need to discuss sooner than later, as Chris will also attest in that email I sent everyone, uh, do something with the courts. Uh, well, I had some ideas, but I'm not so sure I like them. The building is okay, and did you guys want to do the minutes from last week that Rosanna no, sent you Rosanna out? said we're Rosanna going to said when she wants us to start. She said she doesn't want us to do it. Okay, fine. Motion to... Uh, Adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion is so carried. Congratulations, Marty. Thank you. <laughs> Kevin's not going to even make it home. He's got the, he's got the shakes. He's got his line. You going? You gone? We need to. Uh, Marty, um, Kevin. Sorry, I guess it's probably. Nine thirty. Do you have a nickname? Yeah.